I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. Take this wig of flag, you saw them! that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you, please about your friends and today we will continue our comedy laughing at Muhammad. We heard in this introduction some of the most hilarious uh, things happen in the last uh, week or two weeks. But one of the most funny thing is that the Muslims are so desperate to the point they go and ask an atheist for help. You know, when you see somebody, he claimed that he's a believer in the one God who is a shin and his shin is so sexy and you know it. When you see somebody, he is a believer and he go after an atheist who believe that anyone believing God is a stupid. When you see somebody, he is a Muslim, and he asks someone, he deny everything written in the Quran to be true, just to fight Christianity. How stupid is that? And this is exactly what happened to this Abdul. This Abdul, he is a certified donkey, like he's a prophet. So if we check out what happened exactly in this interview you know for me the interview doesn't make any different you know i mean this guy he's an atheist what do you expect him to say and what do you expect him to say this guy he believe anyone believe in god is a stupid too ask him do you believe in god he will say no people who are stupid they will <laughs> you know so i mean what the point of bringing an atheist your donkey unless you are a certified donkey and this is the reality certified donkey like Muhammad Hijab, is inviting, according to Muslims, according to the Quran, the one who don't believe in Allah is a donkey. The one who don't believe in Allah is a, is najis, is filthy, is a kafir, is, is, is wicked, is, 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 is. So the Muslims, they invite somebody, they believe he is wicked, proving to us their wickedness. Because who is going to I mean, if, if me Hijab is an atheist, I would say he's an atheist. Okay. This is what atheists do. They side together. But this idiot, he is supposed to be a believer. So why are you inviting an atheist? And then after he invites the atheist, the atheist start giving him screws, life on air. And the funny Mimi Hijab, he put the video. Look how honest he is. What does it mean to be unreliable? <laughs> Muslims believe in Jesus Christ. There's a lot of uh, interest, I think, from the Muslim community. And many Muslims feel that well, your conclusions or historical conclusions of who Jesus Christ is is more commensurate with the Muslim uh, idea than it is with uh, the Christian one. I yeah, you know, we have to consider that Muhammad was a child molester. So, okay, Muslims uh, think Jesus was a Muslim too. Why? Jesus was a child molester? Muhammad, he go to the house of his own son and he flirt with the wife and then later he force him to divorce her. Is that what Jesus do? While Jesus was walking in water, making the blind see, resurrecting people from death, Muhammad was masturbating, playing with his private part between the legs of little tiny Aisha at the age of five. Which according to Muslims, it is six. In our calendar, that will make her five. So the desperate Muslims, because they are bankrupt, their bankruptcy took them down to the bomb. And look what happened. 
I, I wouldn't say that they line up well with the... Um... I wouldn't say they line up well. By the way, this idiot, just to show you this guy is, an, is a stupid, he have an interview with the, uh, with the Apostle Prophet. He said the opposite in somehow. You know, this guy is obviously mentally ill. This Air Rahman is a mentally ill person. For us, we don't take what he's saying into consideration. Theory says the Christians and Muslim faith, they don't line up together. Absolutely not. Absolutely. We, ag we agree. But in different uh, statements, he said the opposite. So this guy is a literally, literally have a mental illness. But sometimes crazy ones, they can be crazy because they are smart. You know, I mean, there is like, let us say, a thin hair between a genius and mental, mentally ill person. Muslim view. <laughs> I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. So what this guy he did, Mimi Hijab, he invited him to prove a Christianity and the Bible is corrupt. But look what happened. If this is the person who can prove it, then he can prove it. And we accept what he say. And Mimi Hijab is sitting like a puppy. By the way, uh, uh, somebody sent me a link of Mimi Hijab, previous link, he was showing his chest. And I notice he have hair in that chest. The one he did last week, he shaved it. I mean, you know, maybe for you this is normal, you know, but for Middle Eastern this is a shameful thing. Go, go and ask any Middle Eastern. But anyway, Muhammad, he used to use sugar to shave his ass and he shave his chest and to shave his arms because he always Muhammad, he wanted to be a girly. For Middle Eastern culture, this is a big shame. And this is what hijab he did. Go watch his videos in this in the in the speaker corner and see he have here in his chest. See the last uh, uh, you know he he took it off. But now he will shave everything soon. I mean I, I'm sure he's shaving everything already. But soon he will shave his beard because he just said, and he is sitting like a puppy with this man that I believe it truly that Jesus was a crucified. That's mean that the story in the Quran is a joke. I believe it truly that Jesus was crucified and not only that the guy he said it clearly that the most documented event in the world it was the crucifixion of Jesus about the crucifixion of Jesus and whether he was indeed crucified right I know in, I know in Islam the the, the teaching is that he he was not actually uh crucified i think on a historical basis jesus was absolutely crucified i i think that there is jesus was absolutely crucified this and for me i don't care what this guy's saying but you must have you invited him for interview that's mean you are the one who take him and to take him into a big deal so when he said jesus absolutely was a crucified that's mean absolutely muhammad is a fraud and he is a son of Muta because he's born four years after his father's death. So when the Quran says, Wama salabuhu, they crucified him not. People, don't forget to invite your friends. Don't be lazy. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. I don't care. Don't subscribe. Who care? Uh, chapter 4, verse 157 says that the Christian, they say, oh, sorry, the Jews, they say, that we killed the Messiah, the son of Maryam. They crucified him not, nor they killed him. So the Quran confirmed two things. There was no crucifixion and there is no killing. Then Muhammad Hijab, the dummy, the one who shaved his chest, he liked to have a nice chest, which is nothing but full of beef. Too much beef and pig. Jesus absolutely was a crucified. The one the Muslims, they take him into consideration. We don't take him into consideration. This guy is an atheist. He was what? Absolutely. Absolutely. He did not say maybe. You see, this guy is an enemy of Christianity. He hated it. So why he would say such a thing? 
thing is that he he was not actually uh, crucified. I think on a historical, I know in Islam the 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 teaching is that he he was not actually uh, crucified. I think on a historical basis, Jesus was absolutely crucified. Bingo. So Muhammad is a fraud. There's no question and there's no debate is needed because the Muslims they agree that this is the consultant we can ask him. This is the one we can go back to and the proof they have his interview. They have article about this interview now. Imagine the Muslims, this is how this is how silly this cult is. Those people they have articles about it, but they will not mention in the article what this guy said. That Jesus truly, truly was a crucified. <laughs> and you notice here how Mimi Hijab sitting, he is so cute and so sweet, especially when he said to him that your book is the same as the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in whether Jesus was the Son of God because I don't think there was a God. <laughs> and so, my understanding is that your conclusion is that Jesus Christ was a messianic prophet. Your conclusion is that Jesus Christ was a messianic prophet. You stupid idiot, donkey, donkey. This guy is an atheist. Are you donkey? I mean, somebody grabbed him from his tail. In order to believe that he is a prophet anyway, he has to be not an atheist, you idiot. I mean, when the mother of this man, she gave birth to him from which location? I think he was a booger. He was a booger in the nose. You are asking an atheist. What? <laughs> Son of God, because I don't think there is a God. <laughs> and so, my understanding is that your conclusion is that Jesus Christ was a messianic prophet. <laughs> I'm going to open my Skype so we can have any Abdul he would like to explain why Muslims. Why Allah cannot find a smart person to defend him? Why Allah is so desperate, he got the most stupid idiot ones to present him to us. If those are the one who will defend Allah, so who is the one who will fight Allah then? Because it's a... Is the video working fine, guys? All right. <clears throat> Is everything fine? Because uh, from my side it froze for a second. So, do you think that the Messiah he thought he is a mess? Uh, you think he is he was a messianic uh, uh, prophet? How in the world such a thing can happen? Let us see if we have a problem with our connection. I cannot uh, view my page here. Let us see. Uh -huh. What happened to YouTube? Let us try something else. I'm not sure what's happening. I don't know if you guys you can hear me or not, but uh, my YouTube page is not playing. I don't know. Is it working? Is it not working? What's happening? All right. Okay, now it's coming back. Let us see. All right, looks like it's working. From my side, it was frozen. I didn't know what happened, so. So listen carefully, Mohammedans. The first is thing is confirmed from your Mimi that Jesus was a crucified. And that means Muhammad is a fraud, Quran is a stupid, 
and Muhammad. You see, if this document, which is in the Bible, proving that Jesus was truly crucified, all your idea of Islam is gone. This guy, he demolished Islam in one second. Yes, absolutely, Jesus was crucified. Who is the one who said that? The one you brought him to the interview. For me, I will never invite this person for interview because he means nothing for me. I will invite him for a debate, but not for interview. You know, when I interview a person, it means I agree with him. That means he is the master and I am the student. This is what the interview is about. You are, the, you are the skilled and we are here to ask you questions. Uh, unless it's a, like it's a job interview, then the story can be different. Somebody is hiring somebody. Are you hiring him? No. So the Muslim, they needed this person. And this person, he confirmed that Jesus absolutely was a crucified. And for me, I will never interview such a person. But as long as the Muslims and then even the atheists, they are interviewing him, I will have to use this interview against their own statement because they are the one who believe that this interview is going to cause damage to Christianity. But it worked in the opposite way. The, 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 the teaching is that he, he was not actually... I know in, I know in Islam, the, the, the teaching is that he, he was not actually uh, crucified. I think on a historical basis, Jesus was absolutely crucified. I, absolutely. I think that there is, uh, as a historian, there's, there's almost no doubt about that. And in case, in case your audience doesn't know, I'm, I'm not, I don't identify as a Christian. I mean, I, I was raised a Christian, but I'm an atheist now. I'm not... I am an atheist now. In case the audience don't know. In case audience don't know. So why the Muslims are taking friends with the atheists now? Very simple. When your God is a devil, you throw him under the bus for the sake of your agenda. You have no, you have no value. You have none. Let us see this gentleman here. Uh, hello. Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Yes, so did your historian DNA tested the likeness of Jesus that got crucified? Did who? Did your historian or ATS person DNA tested the likeness of Jesus that got crucified? DNA? DNA test, yes. Where do you want to get the DNA? When, okay, so when there is no body, you can't prove it was Jesus, right? Okay, did you test the DNA for Muhammad? That's, that doesn't change anything for us. Well, you, you change because the Quran says, the Muhammad, he says, when a prophet, he die, the, the, the earth will not consume his body, so we should have a DNA. So if his body is not consumed, then the Quran DNA. Quran says that. No, Muhammad, he said, that. The, Muhammad, he said, he said that, he said. No, no, nothing he, Quran does, nothing Quran. I mean, my friend, your prophet, your prophet. Are you saying your prophet is not to take into consideration? He is a dummy. He says things, stupid things. Here we go. This is your prophet, and this is Sahih Hadith. He says, "Pray for me to in Friday." And this is today is a Friday. Let us pray to Muhammad. May Allah bless you, Muhammad. May Allah. Okay. Well, they said to him, "But Muhammad, you will be dead." He says, "But don't you know that the prophet, the earth is forbidden from consume our, uh, consume our our body." So now, if we go to the grave of Muhammad. We shall have the body of Muhammad there, and we can take the DNA. But the Hadith report that Muhammad, after three days from his from his death, because they didn't bury him, they believe him. They said, okay, he said the earth will not consume, consume my body. So they did not bury him for three days and three days. You can, you can go and search it. Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, he says, he said, Bury your friend, he smell like shit. This is what he said. And then the other hadith says that his uh, his uh, his, uh, his pinky and his fingers are are shrinking like he's 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 grabbing his hands. What happens to people when they die? And he said, "Qadaraba batnahu." You know the the, the 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 belly of a human being when he die, because whatever he ate before he die, the bacteria will start you know doing their job, which is they are there for it. 
and then a lot of guys will come and will make his belly like a pregnant woman. So, and then Muhammad starts farting. So, you are the one who mentioned the DNA. We can solve the problem about Islam very easy. If Muhammad, his body is there, we can go and get his DNA, and that will prove that what Muhammad he said is true. That the body will not consume his, his uh, you know, that the earth will not consume his body. His body will not decay. But as you see, even before they buried him, his body is already decay. What say you? You change the subject, right? No, you are the one who mentioned to me the DNA. Is it me who said DNA? I said for I me. Said, I said to you how we will get the DNA of Jesus if you Muslim you strip it. You believe that Jesus right now in heaven. Don't you Muslim believe that Jesus in heaven now? How I'm going to get his DNA? So we have to say there is a bus. Strip it, Abdul. Strip it, Abdul. If there is a bus to go to heaven right now and get the DNA of Jesus. So you can't prove it what Jesus I'm crucified. asking you, is Jesus now in heaven or is in earth according to your stupid cult? Before crucifixion, he was this in heaven. This is another question. Yes. Jesus not now where he, is, where he is because you are asking me to get his DNA. So if in order to get his DNA, we have to get, go and get the DNA from Jesus himself. Jesus right now is alive or he's dead. And where he is, answer me. He's alive and you can't get the DNA so you can't prove so you it are Jesus crucified. So you are stupid then because Jesus, he is alive. And now he is in heaven, and this is in total agreement with the teaching of Christianity because we believe that Jesus, after the crucifixion, he went up to heaven. Now I'm asking you, the gentleman who, Mimi Hijab, he invited him, and he agreed that he's a scholar. This is what he agreed. This is why he's inviting him. He said that Jesus absolutely was crucified. He didn't DNA tested the likeness of Jesus that got crucified. I'm asking you now, the guy, he said that, he confirmed. I don't, he, he don't have a DNA too. So why you Muslims, why you Muslims don't agree with the one you interview and he said Jesus absolutely was crucified? Why should we agree with him? What do you mean not? Because he didn't DNA test Jesus. Okay, hold on, but you are the one who invite him to take his professional opinion. Just just asking, yes, just asking him. But what do you, what do you mean just asking him? Okay, he answered you now. Now it is your turn to refute him. Because now, no. because now he got your Quran busted. The Quran says that Jesus was not crucified, nor okay. nor he was killed. Okay. Okay. So when the guy he says so, no, he was killed and he was crucified. How, how did and he you, know when he didn't be in the Hold on, hold on. And your dummy Mimi Hijab sitting like a puppy. He did not say to him, no, we have a proof that he was not. Did he say we have a proof he was not? No. The guy, he said, this is the most absolutely, most documented, even by non-Christians, that Jesus was crucified, and he was killed, and even he was buried. And then you Muslims, you sit like a puppy in front of him, you don't say, no, no, we have a proof. They did not say to him, the DNA, this is the most silly argument ever. Let, let us talk about DNA. Do you like to talk about DNA? Okay. Okay. What is the DNA? DNA should be get from the blood of the person. The blood of the person. Yes. So. Okay, so now if we if, if there is somebody who have no blood, he have no DNA. But your books have recorded he was bleeding, right? I'm I'm asking you, are you stupid or what? Are you going to say that somebody should have saved the DNA in the floor since two thousand years ago? Is that what you are saying? What what what? what, you, what I want to know what is your mother feeding you when you were a kid? Wasn't his blood in his detachment? I'm asking you, are you going to say that we should have his body saved for 2,000 years because you need to check his DNA? I repeat your question, I didn't get it. You repeat the good thing, you repeat the good. Okay, I will repeat it for you as I can now. Brother and sister, I want them to call me and he said to me, can we get the DNA of Jesus? Because if Jesus was qualified, we needed the DNA. Okay, now this is the answer of Zachary Naik to you, so you can understand. Are you saying that we need to save the blood of Jesus for 2,000 years so we can attend the DA? Here we go. Do you understand now? Gospel of Basilides has recorded Jesus was crucified. I'm asking you, do you, are you saying that the Christian, they should save the blood of Jesus for 2,000 years because one day somebody will know how to, to examine the DNA. And you stupid idiot. Let us say we get the DNA of Jesus. That will prove nothing. Because all of us, we have DNA even before we die. So you are a stupid mentor. No, you can't prove it with Jesus. Because no one can you, you prove it? Because if Jesus, he is dead or alive, the DNA is the DNA. Nothing changed. 
He's a no, it changes or... because it's it's what the likeness of him because it wasn't Jesus. <laughs> That's the change. That's the change. I mean, you know, th this is one of the proof that Islam is a stupid. That the God of Islam, he could not find one smart person to defend his religion. Now, why you did not answer about the DNA of your prophet? Why your prophet he lie? Saying you change the subject. You change the I subject. I am not because here we go. Nobody have DNA. They are you are being stupid. You know why? Why? why no, why, oh, why nobody have DNA. DNA. Secondly, you idiot. Secondly, Jesus he is in heaven and he is not in earth to go and find a grave and dig it and maybe we can find something. So the Muslims believe that he is in heaven. The Christian believe he is in heaven. So your okay. your argument is even against your own belief. No, you believe that he was in the tomb. The tomb had the blood. So where is the DNA of that well, blood? Well, you know, Jesus he resurrected, which means everything belonged to Jesus. Go back to Jesus. So you, you can't prove that the blood is belonged to can Jesus. Can you prove? Can you prove there was a blood? You you guys have recorded he was bleeding. I'm saying to you, can you prove that the blood did not go, uh, like stay there? Can you prove it? You, what do you mean stay here? Well, don't aren't you the one who wanted DNA? Okay. Okay. Can you find the blood? The the tomb. Where is the tomb? Go to the tomb. Can you find the blood? Is there, isn't <laughs> anything there? <laughs> you stupid idiot! After two thousand years, is there anything there? <laughs> so you can't prove it was Jesus. Okay. So you can't prove it was Jesus. <laughs> You know, honestly, did somebody pay you to call me or you did it voluntarily? Gospel of Basilides has recorded Jesus wasn't crucified. So it, it was, he was transfigured okay, into someone else. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. The, the Gospel of who? Basilides, B-A-S-I-L-I-D-S. But, but, but this Gospel says that the one, this is not a Gospel, by the way. This is, a, this is a, you know, a fiction. But anyway, we will go with you. Just you are stupid. You hear this guy saying the word and you do not know even how to say it twice. But we will go with you. But even that says that Jesus is God because he is the powerful God. He made someone look like him. Do you agree with that? Where does it say Jesus made someone look like him? You are making that by yourself. Okay, here we go. Everybody will laugh at you again. Here we go. This is the interview. Hmm? Open your YouTube and, open. and mute my Skype for now. Okay. All right. Here we go. This person, he will get you busted. You are an idiot. You do not know what are you talking about. In case your audience doesn't know, I'm I'm not. I don't identify as a Christian. I mean, I, I was raised a Christian, but I'm an atheist now. I'm not. I don't have a particular stake in any of this information personally. But I think the crucifixion of Jesus is one of the, is probably the best attested one of the best t attested events of his life. Um, it is, um, it's found all over the place in our early sources. It's even mentioned by non-Christian sources. And it's, um, uh, it's a kind of a complicated thing for me to argue, although I can at length if somebody wants me to, the, that it's, it is not, it's not the kind of thing that Christians would have made up about him if they wanted to make up legends. Um, if they wanted to make up something about Jesus, it wouldn't be that he got killed by the enemy, <laughs> tortured to death. Uh, then what they would have made up is that he became the king and he's sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. <laughs> but they couldn't make that up because everybody knew it wasn't true. <laughs> and so they had to say, well, yeah, he got crucified. But then they ended up saying that because he was crucified, that was significant, that it was the plan of God. And um, But they're, they're kind of explaining it. They're not... You know, they're explaining because they got to explain it because he was crucified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Islamic account is very strange. It is, it is that, um, I guess, that people think Jesus was crucified and that somebody was crucified, but it wasn't Jesus. It was just somebody else uh, who people thought was Jesus. And it's a very strange thing to think. <laughs> no, it is. You know, it didn't start with uh, with Islam. It actually, there's a, there's a Christian teacher in the second century named Basilides who was an mm. Austin. And he wrote a gospel. He wrote a Gnostic gospel. We don't have the gospel anymore, but we have a church father who quote who talks about it. And in his account, uh, what he says is that there. So there was a fellow in the gospels. Jesus is carrying his cross, and they impel somebody else to carry the cross for him to the place of crucifixion. And according to Basilides, what happened is this other person whose name was Simon from Cyrene, which is in North Africa. Simon Cyrene carries the cross, and when he gets there. Jesus pulls an identity switch. 
He's the son of God. He can do miracles. He makes Simon of Cyrene look just like him. <laughs> and then he looks just like Simon of Cyrene. And so the Romans think they're crucifying Jesus, but they're crucifying Simon. And Jesus is standing by the cross laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so you idiot. Unmute YouTube now. So he said because he's a son of God, he's a powerful God, he can switch identity. So even the book you are quoting for us, which is a funny book, this is this is a heretic. This is this is a false. You know, this is why he is not. This book does not even exist. Nobody follow this 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 idea. So even there, even there, this person he is saying that because Jesus is a son of God, he was able to switch identity. It's not, Hold on a second. It's not Hold Allah. It's not Allah who switch identity because Jesus, he is the son of God. He was able to switch identity. Your your mind. He, he's saying because he's son of God. How did he know he was son of God according to the corrupted gospels, right? You idiot, the same gospel you are mentioning. The one you are saying, this is the truth. You just told me the name. According to that book, this person, he said that Jesus, he switched identity because he's the son of God and he can do it. At all times, the title you, son of God hear, was given to hear, the righteous did you person hear of what the family. You, did you hear what he say? Are you deaf? He that he made his own. He added his own interpretation, not the word not that was in there. This is what that book saying. No, he that's his interpretation. That the, we, we can play it again. Are you slow? <laughs> he said because that that because was Abdul, his own interpretation. Abdul, Abdul. Yeah. Okay, hold on. So let us go. I will go with you. So why your stupid God never mentioned his this Bible? Why should mention any Bible? No, that, your God. He mentioned the word in jail. Which means Angel, okay. which means the book is written in Greek. And who is the one who wrote the book in Greek? Angel is a revelation given to Jesus, not saying that he, he will get no, no, crucified. No, hold on. There's no book re revelation given to Jesus. That is a stupid idea. Even your stupid Quran says that Jesus, when he was in the cradle, he spoke as what? As a prophet, correct? He spoke, okay. Okay. So when he got the revelation, if he spoke in the cradle, when he got the revelation, I want to know. From, from his birth. Before his birth or after? <laughs> after. After. Prove it. Go ahead. Give me the DNA test. That That is not related to this subject. No, this is related. Because Jesus is just born. He don't talk yet. And yet he is talking, saying, word of God. So Jesus did not receive revelation. Jesus is the revelation. Are you referring to our book? Some of that our book is true, right? I'm ask, I'm talking about your stupid Quran, chapter 19, verse number 29. The Quran is true, right? I'm not saying it's true. It's a true joke. So don't use it as to, to show that. I'm truth. using it against you because you are a joker. That's not against me. If it's against me, no, it's against Quran you because if you no, go no, to no. court, I have a degree in law. So when you go to the court, I saw a check written and signed by you, not by me, you idiot. So this is a book signed by you, agreed by you. So are you signed by me? You. Okay, agreed by me. Okay. All right. And it so says Jesus. Did, Jesus did, was a prophet. Did Jesus speak in the credo? And it said Jesus was a prophet only. Okay. okay. No, hold on. You said he received revelation. I said to you when he said by birth. Prove it. What do you mean prove it? Okay, what is Jibreel who came to him and squeezed him like Muhammad? When Muhammad received revelation, a guy, his name is Jibreel, appeared to him as a man. He squeezed him three, three times and no mayonnaise and no ketchup came. And he keeps saying to him, read. And Muhammad, the idiot, he do not understand. This is Jesus. He is just a little child, baby child. And yet he is, he do not need Jibreel. He speaks with them. He speaks with them. Okay, look, look, okay. look, 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 look. He says, Peace be upon me, the day I was born, the day I die, and the Hold day on. I will be resurrected. Does it say that? Hold this is Jesus talking. He did not say, Hold oh, Zabri just came to me. There's a brief. Hey, Zabri, what you're saying? Uh, okay, I'm going to say what Zabri said to you. This, this Can I talk? You can, can talk. I... Did he say, so peace be upon me, in the day okay, I was born, the day I, I die, and the day I am resurrected? That verse is about his normal life that he at before judgment day he will die and after judgment day he will rise. But he just said Not peace about... be, just he said peace on okay, me. Peace be... Okay, peace okay said... on him. Okay. okay. How you can say peace on me, you idiot? He said that. No, peace have to come from God, unless he is God. Peace on me. I cannot say peace on me. I would say you can't peace. Say, I can I, say by I myself, I can peace on me. No, just to show that you doesn't how, mean I am just God. Just to show you how stupid you are. I'm not insulting you, by the way. I'm giving you a degree. But listen carefully. When you Muslim, you say the prophet, peace be upon him, 
you are asking Allah to give him peace. Is that correct? No, that is honorification. That's honoring him. This is uh, who is the one who will give him peace? You or Allah? That is honoring him. This not is not giving a question. You need to sit honoring him. Why? Why he was a whore? He need honoring. I'm asking you now. Who is the one who will give Muhammad peace? The one word peace. Who is the one who will provide peace to Muhammad? You or Allah? That's not the that's not the peace that you are talking about. This we are honoring him. Him. First of all, there's no peace in the Quran. It says Allah who malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, which means they pray on Muhammad. You Muslim, you lie. You say we send that him. That is blessed blessing. blessing. Okay, so now here we go. You say so it's a blessing. So why you say peace be upon him then? If it's a blessing, it's a blessing. So why you say peace be upon him? What's what's wrong with it? Okay, where do you get it from? That's for honoring him. Where do you get it from? It's from Quran. Where? Show me. Go ahead. The same verse that you said. You mean about Prophet it's, Muhammad or it's Jesus? About Jesus. I'm talking about Muhammad. Abdul, focus, focus with me. What did, did you eat? Okay, the same verse that you quoted in you Allah. Will yes, change, I will change your name. I will call you a turtle because you have a brain of a turtle. Don't take a selfie because it's going to take forever. Listen carefully. When you Muslim says, peace be upon him, speaking about Muhammad, where and who is the one who told you to honor Muhammad by saying, peace be upon you? And who is the one who will give Muhammad peace on him? Your mind. It's not giving him peace. It's blessings. I don't care who is the one. You are the one who said, peace be upon him a second ago. Now it's not the blessing. It's not the peace. It's blessing. <laughs> Turtle. Listen carefully, focus with me, so don't stop shaking. Listen, when you say, peace be upon Muhammad. Okay, right? that's for okay. honoring him. Okay. Where you get it from? Where do you get this from? It's from Quran. Where? In Allah, but this verse is saying, Muhammad, Allah and the angels praying on Muhammad, not peace be upon him. That's blessings. Okay, you just you strip it, are you stupid? The word of blessing is not peace. Are you stupid or what? I'm asking you where we can find the word peace be upon Muhammad. You say to me, Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, and you don't know even how to speak Arabic. But that verse have nothing to do with blessing. That is Allah praying on Muhammad. You can you can interpret that your way. We I don't am care. Not. We know that. Mimi Hijab, he said, this is why it says pray for, not to. That's not praying. That's blessing. He said that. Are you saying Muhammad Hijab was a liar? Muhammad Hijab is a fallible person. He can make mistakes. Is your prophet a person who can make mistakes? No, he's infallible. But don't refer to hadiths. Prove it. Ah, don't refer to the poopoo of Muhammad. The second Muhammad he talked, he is the same as Mimi Hijab. So look with me. The one you said to me, chapter 33, verse number 56, it says, Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. So Allah, he pray for Muhammad. He don't pray to Muhammad. Supposedly that make a difference, but that doesn't make any difference. The Muslim, they fabricate the answer or the meaning. They say, oh, Allah and the angels send a blessing. So I'm asking you, where is the word peace be upon him coming from? That's alayhi salam. This is not the question. I'm asking you. You said to me, this is the verse about peace be upon him. This is not peace be upon him. This is, I don't want to use bad word. Abdul, are you, you why you go? I want you to do this. Okay. Okay. I want you to drink camel urine three times. Not in my book. What? Not in Quran, not in my book. What do you mean not in the Quran? Where does it say drink camel urine in the Quran? Where, where it says in the Quran, don't do muta no more. Where does in your Old Testament say don't sell your daughter as a slave? Well, sell your, okay, sell your, uh, when a Muslim, he says, don't, where in the Old Testament says, don't sell your daughter, sell your daughter, it is renting a, a person. To that's work. prostitution, so, 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 okay. I, 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 I laugh at you. A person, he is a Hebrew, he can rent himself, regardless if it's a daughter or a man or a woman, for seven years of slavery maximum, because this is how he can pay back what he borrow, or he cannot even make living. So you idiot, you think when he say he sell his daughter, that's mean, he, the guy, he own her. That's it. It is seven years contract. The person, he will use her as a maid, not as a whore. Now, I'm asking you, when you're a prophet, you want to talk about slave, we can switch, and that will make you shish kebab. So I'm asking you now, when you're a prophet, he say something. You Muslims, do you have a backup for it or not? You say to me, don't use the hadith. Wonderful. I'm not going to use the hadith. The Quran says you can do muta. Do you do muta today? 
Do you hold on? Search Wikipedia, sex, slavery in Bible. This they will is, show don't you the, the topic, Abdul. Do you follow the Quran or you follow the Hadith? Do you practice muta? I, I follow Quran. I okay, follow Quran, so the Quran muta. says you do muta. Do you do muta? Okay. When last time your sister she rented herself? I don't have a sister. What about your mother? Mother doesn't. Where does Quran say mother should give muta? For women. Who care about this mother if she's a daughter? Oh, it's marriage. So you, so you, when you use the Quran, use the exact verse. It says, uh, it rather says marriage. Okay, in the front of everybody, can you show me the word marriage in the verse? Oh, it should be in the verse. Quran is a book. It's in the in you, verse. The Quran. you said it says marriage. I want to see it. Show me. Quran clearly said it the. Uh, it's a sin for married people. To get, where, where? Uh, it's, it's, guys, it's a sense of a marriage. What is a sense? Is that like a smell of marriage, but it's not marriage? I'm not getting what you're saying. Because you are slow, turtle. Okay, let us go back. You know, this is how you try to buy time. I'm not getting what you are saying. No, you know what I'm saying. So when the Quran says you can rent a woman to have sex with her for three days or three nights, according to your prophet Hadith, but you said they don't want to follow the Hadith, no problem. So your prophet explained, he says, a man, he can rent a woman for day, two or three days. Boom, boom. He pay her wages. Everybody go home. And this is so called muta. He did not say the word marriage. So now I'm asking you, where in the verse it says, you can marry a woman for sex temporarily. Chapter 4, verse number 24, 25 in the front of us, where it says that. Where the, why should it be in that verse? Quran has mentioned the verses of marriage in other verses. Show me where it says that. I don't care about verses. Connect the verses. No problem. Go ahead. Connect. So connect what the verse, verses. What no. verse do you want? About marriage? Connect, connect the verses. Connect the verses. About marriage? What's wrong with you? We are talking about what now? Yours, you know say what? Did, if you, a married you know, woman you know can... what? Be honest with me. Did you give any heart attack to your family? Are you married? Don't ask irrelevant questions. Because you are so stupid. We are talking about the same verse for the last 10 minutes, and now you are saying to me, this is that we're talking about marriage? For sure we are talking about marriage. You said this is about marriage. I said to you, show me the word marriage. The word marriage is not in this in you, this verse. You remember, you remember, you are the one who called me before, and you said to me, "Ignore what is between the between the brackets." Correct? Okay. Okay. Here, it's it, they put it between bracket. Ignore it. <laughs> the word marriage is appearing between bracket. Ignore it. No, it's not here. But Quran is, is not no, one no, no, verse. No, 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 no. It is you who said to me before. It's recorded. Ignore what is between the bracket. Okay. So it is not there. It's a fabrication, and you are the one who asked me to ignore what is between the bracket. Ignore it. So now, where Listen, is the word, where is the word was, marriage? Where is the it's word? It's not there. It's in Quran. It's in Quran. It's not in that. Verse. Is Quran, Quran is a you book. Idiot. We are showing you the Quran. Show other verses. Clear mentions marriage. This is the not verse this speaking verse. about muta. This is the only verse speaking about muta. How we are going to show you other verse have nothing to do with the muta. This is the verse about muta. Other verses, where does other verses a married woman can, can get, give muta? You see, I got you. I got you. Oh, okay. Which other verses said a married woman can give muta? Which one? Abdul. Which, one? which verse? Okay. Oh, guys, which verse it says married women they can give muta? Who, who is talking about married women? You idiot. We are talking about the women you can rent her. Did I say a married woman can do muta? Okay. So we are, so right now we are, we are, okay? Okay. So you Muslim women, you go in the market, she stand in the in the in the platform, a person he stopped his car, he said to her, Can I rent you for half hour? And this is according to you, marriage. Okay. Okay. This the same is in your book, right? No, where? In Exodus 21, 7 and okay. Google Wikipedia. Okay, Wikipedia no, sex slavery. Wikipedia, Wikipedia. Exodus 21, read it for us, where it says you can do muta. 21 7 it says you can sell your daughter as a slave but, uh, she is a slave she will be a maid <laughs> then you can have sex with slaves in other verses 
other verses you can have sex with a you slave. See, you see, you fail. You fail miserably. No, no. You fail miserably. You fail miserably. Search, hold on, hold on. Search Wiki hold on, Wikipedia, hold on. sex and slavery. Uh, uh, exhibi- sex and slavery in Wikipedia. Exhibidia ex- 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 boy. Listen. So, I, when I ask you for reference, you give me a reference. However, you two agree. references. You agree. I give you two references. That's one reference. No, you gave me no reference. That is a lie. This is not. That's one reference. That Twenty-one seven true. Exodus. That is not a true because the Bible says it clearly. If a man he rape a woman, he will be put to death. And if she is single and he is single, they have a choice to fix it if she agree to marry her. So you are a liar again. Because no, I, hold on a second. Hold on. Let me. No, 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 no. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. But a boy, don't share the topic. It doesn't say that. So you are the one who said. That you, yeah. you you Muslims have no problem your sister or your daughter or even your mother to rent herself for mother her is wife. married. Don't make things mix up. What? Mother is a married person to a husband. Mother is what? Mother is a married person to a husband that has a wife. He has a husband that doesn't. There's no marriage. She is. She is no. There's no mother woman. She is divorced and she have no husband or widow. A divorce. A divorce woman. Okay. Okay. So you are saying that Islam is a religion of ethic. And a Muslim woman, she can walk in the street and she can stop by anyone. And a guy, he offer her to have sex for $10. And this is Islam. This that's in your book also. You, you know, you failed to show me. I, I am giving you two verses. One verse, Exodus 21, 7. You did not give, the, me, you did not give me anything. The, the, verse, the, the second verse. Okay, the hold on. Verse. Okay, hold, hold, okay or, hold on. So... If you go in the same chapter, I challenge you in front of everybody. Do you, do you like to read Exodus 21? And the second verse also. Do you like to read the ver- Exodus 21? And the second verse. Well, read any verse you want. Go ahead. Okay, hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Now remember, you are the one who asked to read the verses after it. Levitic, Leviticus tw- no, chapter 19. You see it, Exodus. Don't change now. You see, oh, you see, I got you. I have okay, the you verse. got me. You no, know we I... can read that one, son of Mata. Don't, don't don't play a game with me. You said Exodus twenty one. You. you are the one who said Exodus twenty one. Read and Exodus. the second verse. Oh, and the second hold verse. Hold on, hold on. So Exodus twenty one says, and if the man he married her to his son. So why you jump from that? It is you who mentioned it. So he twenty one seven. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, read twenty one seven. seven, eight, and, and nine. Read it. And also Leviticus 19, 20. Okay, we can read that too. No problem. But finish what you said. You coward. You're stupid. You see, and people, they say to me, well, you know, you need to have more patience with those Abdul. Abdul, there's no patience in the world can hold a stupid mental person who believe that his mother, it's okay for her to rent her vagina. Here we go. This is Exodus 21. And verses you mentioned to me, it says here, and if a man shall sell his daughter, to me, a maid servant, not a whore. Where does it say maid servant? It says it's in it's the front of you, potato. It's in front it's, of you. It's, it's and then, a slave. And then it's a slave. And then, you you uh, add words. Uh, 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 I got you. Uh, 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 and then I it got says, you. And says, and I if, got he you. Have, if he have married her to his son, married her to his son, you are a stupid idiot. You are a certified donkey. But look what we got from you. That your mother, she can rent her vagina and you have no problem with that. My mother is married. You can't be- get lost. She will be divorced soon and she will be available. Especially when she watched this video. <laughs> you see when they lie? Go and read it. It says if he married her to his son, not even to himself. He can't even sell her out because this is a contract of employment. People at that time, they are poor, they are desperate. There's somebody have money. So he come to him and says, I want to be your servant. This is what slavery means here. A Hebrew man or Hebrew woman, she say, I want to be your maid. I want to be your slave. Which means you have full control of my lab- labor. And those people, because they have no income, look like now we can apply to work in Walmart, you can work as a taxi driver. There's no jobs. There's no opportunity. There's people who have money and there's people who have none. So the one who have none, he offer his service and that will give him food, will give him shelter. This is not really a slavery, the one we knew. This is why it says he sell. So he could he take money in return 
of his daughter, and this is the daughter I have to agree to. The daughter, she will go and say, okay, father, you know, we cannot afford it. What we can do? I will go and work for this guy. Negotiate with him for how long and how much he will give you money so he can survive me and my family. So a member of the family or even sometimes the whole family go. But what we get from you, which is very important, that a Muslim woman, she can rent her private part for a bunch of dollars. And actually, if we go to the Muslim website, the Muslims, they have no shame to use even the word rental. You believe it or not? Let me open the reference for you. Rental. It's not a Christian prince he is insulting using that word. It is the Muslims. <clears throat> this is a Muslim website. I'll put it for you on the screen. <clears throat> Alislam.org. You do not need to rent to, to sorry to read the whole article, not to rent. Just search for the word rent in the in the page. Rent or rented. Look what you will see. In some in some work, a special term applied to women who participate in such a muta, mustajara in Arabic mustajara mean rented women. Muta is considered as a kind of rental. So how the Muslims, they lie and they say Islam and Christianity, they share the same God. Women, they are renting their vagina to get paid for sex. This is from God. So what is the prostitution then? Hmm? What is, a what is a prostitution? For those who they are in the chat, going out of our topic, especially females, I will block you all, one after one. Anyone is coming here for her stupidity, get lost. Some people here, they come, they have no shame. We are trying to save soul. They are worried about their lingerie. Muslims. Stop thinking about your panties. Think about your head. Think about your soul. Think about your salvation. So whoever a stupid person, admins, anyone he go out of the topic, start having personal conversation, block them immediately. This is not what we are here for. This is not a chat forum for people to have, hello, how are you doing? This is not a coffee shop. We gave you a warning, you better listen. Anyone, he see this girl, her name is Nightmare, from the admin, block her immediately. Now and forever. I don't want to see this, this woman again. Go and see a doctor. Go and see, take medication. We are here to save soul, they are here to date. What a stupid people. I mean, we have patient first time, second time, third time. Are you a bug? Thank God I am not married. You, you, you as women, they make you hate to get married. What's wrong with those people? Look what we are fighting for. And look what they are busy about. Sorry, guys. You know, but sometimes you lose your patience, man. And Muhammad, he have 13 of them. 
13 you must be mentally ill Muhammad how you can handle it hmm. now for sure not all women are the same there is super smart genius ones they are way smarter than, than men but there is some women they are really you know, they mispresent their own gender now do we have any Abdul do you have the DNA of Zesis? Look at this guy. I mean, this guy, he was thinking about it for 10 years, maybe. The DNA of Jesus. What do you want? Do you have the DNA of Zesus? <laughs> Somebody asking how different the Shia Wilver and the understanding of jihad and jizya compared to my mainstream Sunni. It's the same, my friend. It's, you know, Ali, he burned people alive. Ali, which is the Shia, they worship him. You see, the Shia, the difference between the Shia and the Sunni is not much. The, but the Shia, they make Muhammad family to the level of God. So they say that those Muhammad and his daughter and Ali and the, the, the kids of Ali, they are not human they are light they are made of light and they used to be stars from the forehead of Allah when the Quran says that Muhammad is a Siraj Siraj is a lamp Siraj is a lamp So the Shia, they go to this verse and they say, as long Muhammad, he was a Siraj, that's making him a light, he's a lamp. And as long Allah is a light and he's a lamp too. Therefore, the children of Muhammad, they are lamps and light too. So the Shia, they, are, they, they take Muhammad and his family to higher level of worshipping. Otherwise, both of them, they worship. But the Shia, they worship the whole family. The Muslim Sunni, they worship Muhammad alone. I hope I answered you. There's a person he mentioned about Al Mahdi, you know, Al Mahdi, in the in the in the comment in the previous video. I mean, you know, the Muslims, uh, they have their own fantasy, you know. Always, Islam is a fantasy. Islam is not a reality. Everything is a fantasy. So. If I say to you, like if you ask a Muslim, who is the Mahdi? Who is the Mahdi? Who is a Muslim can answer us? They don't know. They have fiction stories. And they go so far. To the point they say that the Mahdi is the grandson of Simon. He's what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean the stupidity of this religion especially Shia it goes so I mean it's beyond the stupidity so Simon he is the grandfather of Al-Mahdi the Imam Al-Mahdi which the Muslims are waiting for and he is the grandfather from the mother's side from the mother's side, remember. <laughs> uh, Armin, uh, Turtle, how are you doing? Go open the interpretation for this verse in the Shia books and you will see. You're an idiot. You're a certified idiot. There's tons of videos on YouTube, actually. We can play them. They are saying clearly that Muhammad and his family, they are on war. هذول ما هم مخلوقات مثلنا هذول أنوار ربانية <laughs> they are not human like us they are أنوار they are light like us <laughs> oh boy you see
see, uh, Islam is trying to copy everything in Christianity. Jesus have 12 disciples. Muhammad, he have 12 Imams. Jesus, he have four disciples wrote four books. Muhammad, he says, take the Quran from four. Jesus is God. Muhammad, he changed his name. He made it the praised one. Islam is a counterfeit of a Christianity. All what Islam does, try to replace Jesus of the Christians with Muhammad, who is the praised one. The second you say he is the praised one, that means he's God. Because there is no one should be praised save God. When we say, we Christian, you know, whoever believe, we say, praise God, right? We don't say praise this, you know, praise God. There's only one worthy if to praise is God. So when the Muslim, they agree that their prophet, his name is Muhammad, that will not make him a prophet no more because now he is the praised one. So who is the praised two? Anyway, do we have any Abdul? Somebody saying to me where we can find those you are talking about that Simon. Actually, there's a there's a book Muslims they have. Let me try to find it. But as you know, everything in Arabic, this is why it's extremely uh, important to know Arabic in order to get access to the garbage of Islam. Uh, here we go. I searched in Google. Uh, and I guess this is the, the this is the the uh, copy the front page of the book. Simon of they call him as Safa, was Isa, which means the one who uh, Jesus he gave him uh, orders, let us say, to inherit him. Wajadu uh, al-Imam al-Mahdi li and he is the grandfather of the Imam and Mahdi from his mother's side. And this is written by Ali al-Qurani, the Imam Ali al-Qurani, about al-Imam al-Mahdi, as you see. And this is uh, printed, this book, 2014. But this is just, uh, let us say, a, a recollection of a previous information written in books for centuries, you know? So his, this guy is not making something new. He is just saying, well, this is what it is. And uh, let us give you a reference, put them together in a new book. All right. Uh, very silly, very stupid book as usual, but, but I'm not surprised. You know, it's, it is Islam and this is what Muslims do. Muslims do what Muslims do. Never expect something smart to come out of somebody he think like a turtle. We just receive a call from a person. He have no problem if his mother, she rent her vagina. Said, so what? No problem. Anyone have a question? Anyway, so the, the title today actually is about uh, the yellow pages. The yellow pages. You believe it or not? Mimi Hijab, he got an idiot who is really silly, and even the silly one was smarter than Allah. But how this happened? Mimi Hijab, he decided to stood a little bit and to defend the Quran because he looked horrible. So he decided to say something, you know, to add a spice to the conversation. He thought he, he can make a point of intelligence. <laughs> In the Quran, it's mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> so... <laughs> and the funny, Mimi Hijab himself, he laughed at the stupidity of his God. 
Because how in the world you come to me and the proof is that if this book is from God, you will find no contradiction. Open Mickey Mouse magazine, find me a contradiction. Try. <laughs> So this, this person, even though we believe he is really mentally ill, he's a smart, this uh, uh, Harman, whatever his name. Right away, he, 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 you know, he kicked Muhammad Hijab in his anus, not in his balls, because he didn't have any. That's why he ran away from debating me. And he told him, you idiot, you stupid, you donkey. What kind of logic is that? So if there is no contradiction, that to the book from God. And not only that, this God, he failed even in his own challenge. If this book has no contradiction, the Quran is full of contradictions. And one of the most clear one, chapter 41, chapter 79, where one says that the last one thing Allah created was the lamp. And the other one says the last thing Allah created was, a, was, was the, the, the mountains. Very easy. A Muslim yesterday, he posted a comment speaking about the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis saying, uh, 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 ch like chapter 1 and then chapter 2, he says, well, here it says that God created the animals first and the human uh, uh, after. And then there it says the opposite. That's false. In one is giving the order of a creation and the other one explaining explaining the cre creation. Is it allowed for a Christian to fight back evil? You see, they bent in the evil as an example. If the evil is somebody, uh, you know, if I live in a city, I should not fight evil by evil. Christians always have to fight evil. But the Bible says, don't fight evil by evil. Which means, if somebody rape your wife, you don't go and rape his wife. That is evil. If somebody stole your money, you don't go and steal somebody's money from his family. Go take your money. Jesus said, the one who lived by the sword, by the sword will die. Which means, when you commit a crime, it is the right of other side to take you down by the sword, the same as you did to them. So the Bible is full of verses speaking about justice and the one who killed must be killed. So yes, we fight evil, but not by evil. If somebody commit a murder, he shall be killed for his crime. If a terrorist come to my house right now, he wanna shoot me. I have enough bullet to make his ass more than my filter to the water. So many, they say, uh, Christ, he say, he said, don't, uh, don't uh, resist, right? But you know, don't take that, don't, don't, you know, don't take that explanation. Jesus himself, he said to them, the one who don't have a sword, go on by one. They said to him, we have two. He said, that's enough. So two for what? To protect themselves when they travel to go in the road, not to go and invade and to kill. Enough. You have two guns, that's enough. You do not need to have a, a storage of weapon because that means you are going to war. That's not for defense no more. Abu uh, Turab al-Harbi. Uh, okay, Master Abu Turab, you are saying to me you are absolutely an idiot. Why you don't call me, my friend? Let us see who is the idiot. Guys, what do you think? What do you think? When you Muslims, you invite an atheist to prove Islam wrong. But the target is to prove a Christianity wrong. Who is the idiot? When you do interview to someone, he is an atheist. Are you aligning with atheism just to fight Christianity? This is who you are. This is idiot behavior. So Abu Turab al-Harbi, and you are addressed as an Arab, but I don't, I don't, I don't believe this is your picture. This is the picture of Mimi Hijab after he shaved. Do you dare to call me? In the front of everybody. Challenge and let us see who is the idiot. The idiot, my friend, is the one who say that when you go in the bathroom, shaitan, he, he, he go inside your anus. That is an idiot. 
and that is your prophet. The Eden is somebody, he says, that when you go to heaven, Allah will give you boobs, big boobs. That is a stupid, low-class, trashy idiot. The idiot is somebody he believes that there is a prophet, his name is Muhammad. If we believe in him, Allah, his God, will give us endless penis. I want you to tell me how you will walk with it, Abu Turab. Are you going to walk forward or backward? Because I'm telling you from now, walking forward with endless penis is impossible. This is an Arab tribe leader. Ah, uh, really? This is the picture of Arab tribe leader? Yeah, which one? Are you proud about Arab tribe leader? Okay, then I, I can say to you that the Prophet says the one who is proud about his inheritance from before Jahiriyyah, because tribal is an inheritance from Jahiriyyah, tell him to go and buy the penis of his father. Are you going to buy the penis of your father? That's your Prophet's statement. So look what happened. This guy is a proud about a tribe leader and his prophet forbid him from being proud about anyone except him because he want people to worship him. This is from the Jahiriya time, which means from pre-Islam, that people are proud about their tribes. Muhammad, he said, if somebody he do such a thing, tell him, go and buy the penis of your father. At least have some akhlaq. Eh, look who is talking about akhlaq. Muta'ah boy. Get lost. We just heard your brother saying, yes, in Islam, I can, I can rent his sister. And you are talking about akhlaq. Muta'ah. Muslim, they have, uh, 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 what's it called? Zawaj of friend. Search Zawaj of friend. What does that mean? You marry a woman as a friend. So what, what does that mean? Well, you take her to the hotel, you do boom, boom, and then everybody go home. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what about a travel, a travel marriage? You go, yes, let us say a Muslim Abdul is going to Jeddah. His wife, she is in Mecca. What do you do? He go in the hotel. He said, to, can you provide me with the women with the bed? I'm going to stay here for 10 days. He said, sure, halal. They make marriage for 10 days. This is Islam, my friend is the most, the lowest ever religion. And yet nobody speak about ethic and ethical as they do. Any Muslim he dare to make him square, even if you are sitting in a room of four corners. Anyone? Who is a Muslim want to do it? The only Muslim until now he called us is the guy with the DNA. I mean, look at this idea, man. The DNA. Do you have the DNA of Jesus? <laughs> you have a brain of a turtle. You have a brain of a turtle. Prove me wrong. Who is a Muslim when I come here and call me? The yellow pages, and here we go, my proof in front of you. The yellow pages is way better than the Quran. Yellow pages have zero contradiction. Quran is full of contradiction. That has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> so, no, that, that is my view. It's a necessary condition for a book from God not to have contradictions. It's That's an assumption about what kind of... It's a necessary condition. Listen carefully, Abdul. It's a necessary condition from God not to have contradiction in the book, to be a book of God. No problem. No problem. Who's a Muslim and prove that Quran have no contradiction? I say the whole Quran is a contradiction. I say I challenge you to, ch to choose for me a chapter is not a stupid and I will not find a contradiction in it. Hmm? 
<coughs> Anyone? Any Abdul? Uh, the Muslims, you know, they want to talk about the Bible, they want to talk about the Quran. Let us see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let us call him just for fun. Man, your internet is not even working. Go ask your Allah to uh, to uh, to activate your internet. Take a hike. Who's else? Who's next? Who's next? Who is a Muslim? He agree with Muhammad Hijab, Aka Allah, Aka Muhammad, that Allah he put a contradict uh, uh, like a an, an, an condition that if a book is from God should not have a contradiction. Who is a Muslim? He can call me and prove to me that this is absolutely true. The Quran have less than ten thousand contradiction. It's a necessary condition for a book from God not to have contradictions. Is that Did you hear it, Muslims? It's a necessary condition that a book of God shall not have a contradiction. Who can activate that condition and call me? Any Muhammadan? Oh, this guy, the DNA. If I talk to him, this guy is mentally ill. I mean, DNA. Like, I mean, let me call him. As long as there's no Muslims, the DNA guy. <laughs> what do we say when you know, we'll go bankrupt to look for your pennies? And he's on pennies now. Let us lower the ring. I don't know how they can lower the ring. I have to lower the whole value. Because this Skype is really annoying when you call. He's not answering. He's, lo he's looking for the DNA now. <laughs> Actually, even the story about the crucifixion of Jesus proving Muhammad to be a stupid and fraud. Because look what happened. When the Quran says that they crucified him not and they killed him not, in the same verse he confirmed that there is crucifixion happen and there is killing happen. Even the Quran says, وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ يَقِينًا which means they are not sure. <laughs> By saying such a statement, the Quran made a big poo-poo. Why? Let us zoom in in the verse. And by the way, all those things between two brackets is not even there. Let us try to find a, a better, you know, without those brackets. You know, the Quran is so clear to the point Muslim they have to add 20 tons of brackets to make the word of Allah clear, which is supposed to be so clear already. It's so clear, brother. Very clear, brother. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> read with me. <coughs> that they said, okay, who is the one who said? The Jews. They said, they made a, like a, a great lies about Mary. Okay, what is that? They say Mary, according to the Quran, uh, Mary, she was not married, sleeping around. But this is absolutely false because the Bible says it clearly that Mary, she was engaged. And engagement in the, for the Jews is a marriage, but without sharing the house, which means the women, she did not sleep with the husband yet. She did not move to the house of the husband. And they are not, uh, let us say, uh, they are legally married by, by, uh, by religion, but they are not practicing the marriage yet. She, he cannot take her uh until let us say they agree when the day to move to his house he prepare his house etc you know there's it is just a, a let us say a traditional thing but the marriage is already she is his wife which means if he wanna he if you want to sleep with her he can 
And he will not be accused of anything because already she is his wife. This is what engagement is for the Jews. The Muslim today actually they call it Katbul Kitab. This is something they took from the Jews. Her marriage is written, Katbul Kitab. So, and this is we practice until now in our churches. There is they call it half marriage, which means they go and they make an engagement. But the Jewish they go far than that and they say this is total marriage, which means there's no additional things need to be done. Any time they agree to move the women, she moved to the husband's house, she's his wife anyway. So the Jews, they never would accuse such an accusation. At least they are trying just to insult. And something they can do today, you know, no problem. But this is not based on religion. This is not based in the Jewish scriptures. And then he continues saying, and they said, we killed Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. The messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor certified him, but it was made appear to them. This is the DNA guy. Hey, DNA, how are you? I'm good. So I received a missed call from guy. I wasn't at my phone. Yeah, what do you think about what this guy, he said, that uh, uh, it's necessarily for a book not to have contradiction to be from God. Do you agree with that? Okay, but the way you want to twist the book, you can get. I don't want to twist you. Are you, you explain to me. What do you think? I, I will make a deal with you. You are the one. <laughs> you will be the judge. Which one Allah created first, the stars or the mountains? Show to the show the both verses. No, I don't care about you. Know, you are the Muslim. I want an answer from you. Which one Allah created first, the stars or the mountains? It's guys got expanded in the I know which verse you oh I got you. Ex, the other verse says skies were expanded. So mad doesn't mean necessarily this is not a order. question. This is not a question. Which one Allah created first? The mountains or the stars? If I give you answer, you should show the Arabic and then I will explain it to you. I will I, show you this. tell me what verse to show you, I will show you, no problem. Okay, stars. Show me. Tell me what verse. You are asking, you show me the verse. Yeah, I'm asking you. You are the Muslim, not me. I'm a Christian prince. I'm, I'm, I'm not the Muslim prince. You asked me, you should show me the I'm verse. I'm asking you which one Allah created first, the stars or the mountains? Which one? Mountains. You create the mountains first? Show me the verse, I will explain. I don't know. I'm asking you. Don't tell me, show me. Okay, I will, I will help if, you. I will help okay. you. Chapter 2, verse number 29. What is What this verse is saying? Chapter Lulansk. You can show it? Yeah, I can. You have to pay me first. It's a secret because there's no DNA. So if you couldn't prove it was Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could not, absolutely. There's no DNA. Okay. Read it for us and explain to us with your special intelligence. You can use the muta tactique if you want. <clears throat> what you are whispering? Should, what you are whispering? Read it, read it. Read, show the Arabic. Read it. Read show it. The Arabic. You don't know Arabic. Do you know uh, Arabic? Uh, you see, when you read the Arabic, do you, know Ar do you know Arabic? My friend, as long as I show you the verse, I give you the verse number, I give you the, ch the chapter number, read it in Arabic. Go ahead. What's wrong with you? And you are not an Arab, and you don't speak Arabic. So, what you are saying to me, show me in Arabic. This is debunked in Islamic websites. Oh, uh, debunked in Islamic website. Uh, is that yes. is, is, is that is that monkey weed yet? It is debunked, so you're wasting your okay, time on debunked. this one. No, no, I, no, I have time. I, I'm here just to have fun. Just uh, go ahead, debunk it. Go, debunk it. What does that say? What's it saying? Look at the verse. Explain the my... verse. Explain. Okay. I mean, Abdul, come on, turtle. Explain the verse. Oh, what I'm saying, uh, isn't it debunked already? Okay, tell me what it says in the debunk. The verse that uh, contains thumma doesn't mean the after. What is thumma? There's no thumma here. Oh, hold on, the actually, there's, there's Should... a thumma. But what, what does this have to do? Okay. Uh -huh. I you want you an see, I got you. I got you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, you got me. Tell me what. Thumma doesn't mean after here. Ah, uh, thumma does not mean after. So it's mean what? It means uh, it, it's continuation. Ah, continuation. So why in the translation is saying then? As a translator, the somebody we know we know okay, it's not Okay, I want you to change. I want you to change the translator. What translation you accept? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 
hold on a second let me check in yeah check in you are chicken by the way you can check in so easy guys thumma is not after that shall we go to dictionary shall we go you can to go you there's, can go to dictionary there is there is a muslim hold on there's a muslim he teach arabic and he is trying to promote islam and he have a class about the word thumma shall we play it either you have to admit now i give you a chance to redeem yourself my friend from being a liar or you say okay i challenge you to show me a one muslim, of the one uh, of the meanings is uh, after also in other sentences can mean the don't tell me after, blah, 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 blah. what what to mean does it mean after or no both ah Not so now it means it mean after ah one of them one of them is after but in here it means continuation <laughs> ah here it means continuation no it does not mean that here we yes, go yes it does all right here we go this is a muslim uh, video and he is teaching the abduls what the word thumma mean let me put it in the screen and everybody will see in a second and everybody will laugh at you uh let us see what thumma mean here we go it's after you don't need to show it I said uh, so that. it means after so why you are lying i'm not lying i said it is fine here it means a continuation ah okay <laughs> so you, can, you couldn't prove your point i, I told you this is debunked no it did not i just i just admitted that to my mean it's not a continuation it's mean after that he, here doesn't mean after okay where it's okay which interpretation saying here does not mean after Go to the Answering Christianity website, it is debunked. Ah, okay, but Answering Christianity is run by a guy, he's a scholar, and he is a person, he said, there's no magic exists, and he, uh, you know, he made fun of his prophet. He made fun, he says, anyone believe in magic is a stupid. Go and watch his debate with me. Do you agree with him? That magic is a, is a lie, and whoever believes in it is stupid? So you, you can't debunk this one, but you jump to another topic, right? You are the one who mentioned to me, go to website. Uh, what, okay, you go to website. Tell me what they say in the website. Answering Google answering Christianity. I'm asking you what they say in the website. The website says this thumma here doesn't mean after. Okay, oh, 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 okay. the website says that. Read it for Something. me. Read it for me. I challenge you. Which becomes a fact. I have to go kill it. Whether we can answer. interpret the Quran in that particular way to suit something that is known in the future. And the short answer is, we can do that, if language supports well, that fact. That's one point to note. So, but the important thing is that the language has to support that particular interpretation. Some people try to fit the Qur'an with some uh, scientific discovery. And usually these people don't have the right qualifications. See? So this is your oh, Islamic yeah. teacher saying, this is what Thumma is saying, and some people, they try to make the Quran fit with scientific discovery. So they are liars. And this is a Muslim saying that. Why do you want to say that? This is not a Christian prince. And it's a party called Thumma. But the question was, how do we know that Thumma does not have the meaning of order? Someone because in the scientifically silence. we know that silence. the heavens were created before the earth. Shamonia, you, you have so the question asked whether that was to do with the scientific knowledge that we have. Does scientific knowledge interpret the way we understand verses? Meaning in the future, if we discover something which becomes a fact, whether we can interpret the Quran in that particular way to suit something that is known in the future. See? So, and so, so a summa is an order of a creation. This potato, he says in a website, it says that. In this website, it says that. This is a lie. It's a lie. There's no website can say that Thumma does not mean after that. Because this is what Thumma mean. It's about order. Which one is done first? Which one is done after? Of the particle Thumma in a specific verse and in the same context we have also the particle thumma here in this verse which is describing the creation of the earth followed by the creation of the heavens did he say followed by this is an islamic 
person who is a sheikh supposedly who is a professional in Arabic and he is telling those who they are trying to lie about what thumma mean we cannot do that followed by followed by we will call this Abdul again even though he's an idiot but what we can do he's the only Abdul in the in the stage what we can do guys sorry So did you hear your shake? Yes, so it says, uh, oh, it's not a sequential, sequential order, right? He says it is followed by. So Thumma mean followed by. It says, he said also it's not a sequential order. He said, no, it says about, about he, he's talking about Thumma, how many repeated? But he is saying, repeated. He, repeated say, he, he, he is saying, he is saying, he is saying, sequential order. Thumma it's not mean sequential followed order. by. He is saying we should not make the Quran fit with science. Because simply this is what it says, and thumma here mean followed by. Did he say it's followed by? And then he say it's it's not a sequential order. What he, what do you mean he didn't say? He said it's it's mean followed by. This is what we care for. It's mean here followed by. The earth was created, and it was followed by by what? By go into the sky to create the sky so which one is first which one is next this one is continuation there's so much Taba. this is continuation get lost do we have any muslim every single muslim scholar agree that thumma mean after that because simply this is just a plain arabic you can go to a dictionary and you will say there's only one meaning for it there's no two meaning, there's no three meaning, there's no four meaning, there's no options. Desperate. Desperate and a fool. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Any one, any two, any half. We're going to go through examples from the Quran and from outside the Quran to demonstrate the different meanings. And also, we're going to go into some important linguistic discussion regarding the word Thumma. Okay, so Thumma is a conjunction, what's known as a Harf Atf, and it usually indicates order. So it joins between two things, and it indicates order between them, and an extensive period of time. Extensive period we'll of time. explain what that means in just a second. Uh, just prior to giving the example, we need to actually highlight the difference in the light of another. And then he showed us the verse from the Quran, and he gave us the example that this is what Thumma mean, that it's followed by. And by the way, it's not only followed by, it's about something happened long after, not right away. In Arabic, we use the letter fa, like just to add something happen, you know, uh, right away. When you use the word thumma, it's about talking about something took time to happen. Conjunction, which is the fa. So fa is a conjunction that usually indicates order as well. So they both indicate order. The difference is that thumma indicates an extensive period while fa indicates a brief period so when the quran say thumma not only is saying after that it is indicate long time after long time after so it's not just a question if it's after no or not it is long time after and this is the professional in arabic supposedly 
who is using his channel to convert people to Islam. And then you get somebody from India, he do not know how to say his private name correctly. He want to teach us what the word mean. And by the way, we the Arabic Christians are the best, best people ever who spoke Arabic and who made poet in Arabic. All the biggest famous poet men in the history of Arabia are Arab Christians. And I change any Muslim to say no. So, Mimi Hijab, he made it clear that he agreed with his God that if the Quran is from a book, not from God, then this book shall have, you know, uh, a contradiction. And the Quran is the book of contradiction. Every page is a book of contradiction. Not in a place, not in two places. I mean, look at this guy. He looks funny. He lost his four teeth like Muhammad. Do you know, guys, that Muhammad, he lost his teeth? I don't know how Muhammad was reciting the Quran. The guy, he had no teeth. Somebody threw a rock at him, and then he broke all his teeth. And then, How Muslim can even can receive Quran from the guy? When he cannot even pronounce the word correctly. Take your teeth off and see how what will, what will happen to your, to your pronunciation. Right? See Luke 19, 27. I called you, potato, and we laugh at you. We see them. We see them. Okay, I will go with you. Guys, I will go with you, just to show you how stupid you are. When I say Muslims, they are the last one who can defend their stupid God. I mean it. When I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. Look what you just did. Let us say, for the sake of argument, your post makes sense, which is not. Because simply we can defeat anything you claim there. But how your stupid Quran says, I agree with it. When your stupid Quran says, I agree with Luke. I agree with Matthew. I agree with, with, with John. I agree with whatever with you. And you are saying, I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> See how easy to defeat all your stupid stupidity. Musaddiqan lima ma'ahum. The Quran agreeing with what with us. Abdul, who is desperate, he don't agree with what us. Allah, he agree that what with us is the true book of God. Read it. So you idiot, you say. I am going to show you something wrong. Allah is saying, I confirm what is with them. Remember carefully, not what was with them, what is with them. And the Muslim even they say the Quran is a book for every time. Even for today. So this is 600 years after Jesus. The silly Muhammad confirm what is with us. Are you there? Are you still alive? Commercial break? You guys miss the commercial break, don't you? <laughs> commercial break! <laughs> you see, if you start reading the verses from the Bible and you show them that they are stupid and they are silly, they will say to you at the end, they are lying. But what they can say now about the stupid Quran confirming what is with us? What they can say, they will say we don't agree with the Quran. But those, boy, my friend, those people are super, super intelligent. They are. Half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. I was half in the shade, half in the sun. I don't remember what I have done. I asked the Prophet what I should do. He said, Allah will make you a barbecue. I said, Prophet, don't say that. 
Please, I will give you my hat. The prophet, he said, If your hat is full of money, and you will give me your honey, I can forgive your sin, and you can sit as that, half in the shade, and half in the lab of the lat. Half in the shade and half in the sun. Half in the shade and half in the sun. Half in the shade and half in the sun. Half in the shade and half in the sun. While Jesus was making the blind see, Muhammad was busy teaching Muslims not to sit half in the shade and half in the sun. I mean, what an important topic. I was half in the shade and half in the sun. I was half in the shade and half in the sun. I was half in the shade and half in the sun. I was half in the shade and half in the sun. You know what? Is it going to be funny if you have half tan, half none? Like half of you is white, half of you is dark? Mean, I never thought about that. That would be a nice art. Every day I will sit in the same line, half in the shade, half in the sun. Okay, what will happen if we sit half in the shade and half in the sun? Genius? Shade and half in the sun. So my teacher told me that I shouldn't do that. When I asked for the reason, he said, because this is where shaitan sits. So he is asking me, can you elaborate? Yeah, I can. I can elaborate. What's wrong with you? This is very easy, man. I'm genius. I'm a scholar. I'm a sheikh. Not like you, stupid idiot. Don't you know my name is Sheikh Asim? Amon Rabbi Amon. I can elaborate. And I increase your rate. I'm a scholar. Not like you, Barret. Elaborate for us, tell us more. Okay, what is the reason? Easily elaborate. Yeah? This is what the Prophet told us. <laughs> Look at the explanation. Look how deep. Look how deep. He did elaborate now. The lecturer is over in two seconds. Yeah, the guy is asking you the question, what the problem if I sit in the sun and the shade? You say to him, I can elaborate. The Prophet said so. That's it. Okay, the prophet said so, but why? So now he elaborates. This is the intelligence we are facing, turtle. The turtle God, the turtle religion, the turtle penis, the God who promised you penis if you believe in him. Penis God. You cannot find better than this one. Why the gospel of Thomas is fake? Well, Abdul, you stupid idiot. As long as you are saying the gospel of Thomas, why it is fake, why you don't approve it yourself? Just to show you how stupid you are. Do you approve it yourself? <laughs> Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> you know, the problem with those Abduls, I don't like to talk about myself, but you can tell yourself. They have, a, they have a brain of a turtle, and you have a brain of a Christian prince. And you, you can imagine. So, Abdul, why it is fake? Do you approve it yourself? You will say no. <laughs> uh, Abdul, get busy with something more important for you. Don't stay in the shade for now. Okay? Half in the sun, half in the shade, it's a problem because uh, you know the prophet said so he's asking me can you elaborate yeah i can easily elaborate yeah this is what the prophet told us alayhi salatu yeah there are so many things yeah 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 that we believe without understanding so how the muslims come how come the muslims they are discussing verses in the bible they won't understand how come when it's come to this stupid turtle god they don't care to understand the second we say to them, Jesus, God says, I won't understand. <laughs> a person who believes that he cannot sit half in the sun, half in the shade, he is going, going to go in the deep Bible verses. And things go far with the stupidity. Beyond, actually, stupidity. Look at this guy, look. No, but I can believe and relate because I believe in the Quran. I believe in Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, our messenger, and I believe in the existence of Allah. Okay. So anything else is by default. By default. Therefore, Therefore. when we wake up, uh -huh. we... Hold on. Guys, sit down, please. Because if you are standing up 
and something happened disclaimer 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 if you die from laughing and you have heart attack and you have a fever after laughing so hard it's not my responsibility the prophet is giving his information which he received from God and what the prophet received from God is unbelievable information which nobody knows when we wake up yeah. we sniff water up our nostrils nostrils three times three times and blow it out blow it out why why the prophet tells us because satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils where's the dna guy hey dna can you get me the dna from the socks of shaitan when he's sleeping your nose i mean this is very easy you go to sleep huh wait 10 minutes after you sleep shaitan he come he go inside your nose close your nose I mean, close your mouth, close your nose, and don't forget to put a cork in your anus. By the way, when Muslim Sunni, when they die, they put a cork in their anus. I'm not, I'm not, I'm serious. They, they push a uh, cork inside the anus of a Muslim Sunni uh, because supposedly they don't want shaitan to go inside his anus. If this is not the reason, Muslim, leave your comment. Tell me why. If this is not the reason, leave your comment. You know, remember we showed you the hadith where Muhammad he said, when you enter the bathroom, shaitan he enter into your anus. You know, if you don't say a certain prayer, if you don't enter with the left foot, if you enter with the left foot, you became invisible. Right? Look at this man. This is a religion. This is this is a true religion. This is this is something we should consider. Hey, you know, Jesus saying to you, love your enemy, bless those who curse you. You know, making the blind see, walking in water. You know, resurrecting people from death. I mean, look at this is here wisdom. Here is knowledge, my friend. Here is the here is what you know that this is a somebody God talking to him. This is God words. When we wake up, yeah. we. Sniff water up our nostrils, nostrils three times. Three times. And he must have right three times. Who never help me? Why we have to wait three times? Why we cannot evacuate Shaitan by one order from the court? Why it have to be three orders? You must have don't believe in the Trinity. Okay, no problem. So why you have to do it three times? Then you are Muslim. The Muslim, he have to shake his penis three times. He have to clean his, do ablution. He sniff his uh, nose, his ears, wipe his face, everything three times. Muhammad, he have a statement. He said three times. Muhammad, he enter a place. He said, Assalamu Alaikum three times. I mean, this guy is possessed with three times. Allah himself is possessed with the word three times. Allah, he says, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Okay, what is that? Three names of Allah. Why? Is it enough to say in the name of Allah? Why three times? Mary in the Quran, she, you know, she, Allah told her, don't talk for three days. Zechariah, the same. Three times. If a Muslim divorce his wife three times, he can't come back to him. Everything is three times in Islam. Why is that? Is that in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? Hmm? Islam is based on three. Allah, Muhammad, and Jibreel. Can Allah deliver to Muhammad his Quran without Jibreel? No. Can Jibreel deliver the Quran to the Muslims without Muhammad? No. <laughs> you know, one of the funny things in the Quran, not only it's a book of a stupid contradiction and fictions, the guy dies standing for a year, there's a Afrit, there's a genie, he can bring you women who were in Victoria's Secret from Yemen. Uh, there's a genie who died for me to bring me diamonds and jewelries. There's a genie who built for me idols in the synagogue, and the Muslims, they claim that they are against idols. No. 
things can go really, really, really far. And this is what I'm going to say to everybody now. Who is a Muslim is willing to call me and make a challenge for me that he will give me a chapter in the Quran, any chapter. You have 114 chapters. You will make a challenge for me to choose a chapter and not finding stupid things and contradiction in it. Any Muslim? If there is a if there is one chapter in the Quran, it's not stupid. Just one. Any Abdul? Anyone? We give the Abdul the opportunity to call a friend, to call the Sheikh to call me. And during that time, we welcome you all with the Christian friends. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. Take this week a flag, you saw them! That the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. All right, welcome everybody. We are waiting for any Abdul from the turtle kingdom of Allah to call us and prove us wrong. I believe that Allah is a turtle. He has a brain of a turtle. And when I say Allah, I say Muhammad because Muhammad is the only God Muslims they have. Muhammad himself, he never spoke to Allah. He never heard even the fault of Allah. He claimed that there's a guy, he come to him, he squeezed him three times, no mayonnaise and no ketchup came out. And he did not even tell him what his name. We heard this guy, his name is Sheikh Uthman, saying that the angel told him, I am Jibreel. From the first time, show us, show us, Uthman, you are a liar. You are a fraud. This is why the other day, you remember, a Muslim, he called me and he says, uh, you know, I asked him, why, how you know about me? Why you left, you know, now he left Islam. He, he called me to debate me first time to get me busted. You remember? Then he decided after that, after uh, after two debates, if we can call it a debate anyway, uh, to leave Islam. And I asked him, how you, why you came here? He said, because of uh, Sheikh Uthman. So because of Sheikh Uthman, and he said, Sheikh Uthman is a liar. Because of Sheikh Uthman, he is out of Islam. Not because of me. I mean, I am, yes, I convinced him to leave Islam, but... The first thing he noticed that Muslims are liars when they try to defend their religion. And then any decent Muslim, he will start asking himself why we are lying to the Christians if we are following the true God. Any Muslim can call me. Who is a Muslim sheikh is willing to call me immediately. May they, may they, may they. We need a Muslim sheikh who have a long beard. Who can call us and prove us wrong? Any Abdul? Let us see this Abdul. He called me before, but I was offline. But he might be asleep, you never know. 
depending on his timing. So they wanna call until he answer. Any Muslim would like to call me. I have a challenge for you. Name for me one verse. Sorry, none cha one chapter. Even verse, I go with it. In the Quran is not silly and stupid. It's a challenge. Who can accept the challenge? <clears throat> Anyone? I'm looking in my list here in the text I received in Skype to see if Muslims, maybe we can get one. I'm looking at the old text. Look like we have a bankruptcy now. No Muslims, no more. No Muslim believe that Muhammad is really a prophet, no more. How can you say Muhammad is spitting the moon? <sighs> what Muhammad did? He's spitting the moon. Lord have mercy. Please help me. How can you say that Muhammad spitting the moon is unscientific? <laughs> Your prophet, he spit the moon? Are you sure he did not do poop with the moon? He spit it. Ah, you know what? I thought he was just doing boogers, but looked like there's moon inside. He was spitting the moon. Abdul, if I go right now to the verse, you will see nowhere it says that Muhammad did anything. Just to show you how stupid you are. Let us go there. Oops, I'm typing in English. Okay, you have to switch always the language, you know. If we go to the Quran, we will read this and we will we, we will see how stupid the author of the Quran. Shouldn't you introduce for us what happened? The hour of the judgment day is nigh and the moon is a cliff at center. Who did that? Did, is Muhammad involved? Where it says Muhammad, show me. Where even it says Allah is involved. Or what the Quran reporting is, there is a, obviously it's an eclipse. And the Quran here report that there's something stupid of Allah because he claimed that this is the, the start of the judgment day. It is the start of the judgment day. A Muslim saying to me, I'm hiding. My friend, I am like Allah. Allah in the Quran, he says, he speak to anyone. The difference between me and Allah is different. Right? By the way, they're different. Uh, I go and do lecturers. I travel to countries to teach. Allah never showed himself. Allah, he says, I never spoke except from behind a veil. Allah is a female. If we type the word hijab in the search engine of the Quran, what we will find? We find that Allah is wearing hijab. Read it. Do you see it? Your God Allah is a hijab boy. I'm waiting for you. Prove to me that Allah is a male, not a female. If he is a female, why is he wearing hijab? Any Muhammadan? You finish, boy. This is why you see when when you call somebody like Muhammad Hijab is an insult. Obviously, his family they were not like you know brave warrior. They, you know they are they are fame feminine. This is why this guy he shaved his chest the day before he want to go to to take off his t-shirt. Go watch his previous videos. You will see he have hair in his chest. In the last video he did TikTok with his shirt. There's no hair. Hijab is a female. So 
you call a person you are wearing a veil even if even Uthman he tried to insult me he said the Christian Prince wearing a burqa go watch a video it's an insult it's an insult to have a burqa so Muhammad Hijab his last name is burqa because all the men in the family they are wearing burqa otherwise you tell me why they call them this name and this is your God himself is a female too he is wearing a burqa I challenge the Muslim to tell me why Allah is wearing a burqa give me a reason is he hiding is he sexy and you know it reveal myself what do you okay you are hearing my voice can you hear Allah and no I reveal myself what do you what, what what that will do to you what that will do to you you will send me your daughter to do muta with me CB will never reveal himself. <laughs> silly people, silly. <laughs> I reveal myself. I spoke to the elf. He told me that Santa is a true. You made Muhammad a barbecue. And this is why I'm here to do any wish for you. It's a wonderful time. It's a Christmas time, and Muhammad, because of you, he become a barbecue. I'm here to thank you. I'm here to invite you to the North Pole to enjoy the drink with the brother Paul, because you made Muhammad a barbecue. I will go to the North Pole, and our brother Paul is waiting for me, and we will have fun. Christian Prince, Paul will say to me, Christian Prince, I cannot believe it what you say when you are alive. I say, come on, Paul, you can do better. I mean, you are the one who bust many people at that time too. He will say to me, but at that time there was no internet. <laughs> Unbelievable. Any Abdul? Why you no call me? How I can call you? Erdig. Why you no call me? Look, look at this. I mean, this is deep. This guy, you can tell he have a lot of uh, hashish. Why you no call me? That's that's something. Why you no call me? I don't know what to do with that now. I'm getting busy. Sometimes I have a cross eyes. Because my eyes across their war, go across their words, and I get dizzy. Why? Why no? You no call me. You should not say my call me. You should say why you don't call him because you are like Allah. Allah he says, may Allah, Allah speaking, say may Allah forgive thee sin. Like what the heck? May Allah. Who, who's talking? Allah. What Allah is saying, may Allah forgive you if they sin, Muhammad. What's wrong with this God? Allah making a wish? Is that the Christmas wish? Allah is asking Allah, please Allah, forgive his sin. And then the other Allah says, <laughs> you must do, you must be idiot. <laughs> I'm not going to do so. Uh, Muslim is saying, Easter is pagan. Uh, well, uh, can you call me to explain more so we can laugh? A black stone kisser. Guys, do you remember when I went to a, a website? Let me see if I can do it now, actually. Hold on. I'm not going to say what website because the Muslim, they will go and warn them. Hold on, let me, let me find it. So I went to a website. Let's see, I'm trying to find it. <coughs> and I asked a website who their mission is to make people convert to Islam. I asked them, why the Prophet he kissed the black stone? He said, because it's holy. <laughs> I said, why it's holy? 
He said, because the prophet kissed it. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember which website is that. They have a chat, they have a they have a chat, and no, there's not this one. I'm searching, just hold on. Why the prophet kissed the black stone? Because it's holy. And why it's holy? Because the prophet kissed it. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, I don't tell me they closed the website. I cannot find it. Uh, let us see. I uh, want to know how to convert to Islam. Is that the website? Ah, uh, here we go. Let us see. But but I don't think this is the same website. But they have a chat. Let us see. I will put it when, when they answer. Okay, they are asking about email. We will give them whatever email. This will be fun if they answer. Let's see. I sent send him a text, and now we are waiting for them to answer. I want to be know how to convert to Islam. I just said hello, and I'm waiting for them to answer. Let's see. And you will see the most hilarious, silly, stupid answers ever. Just wait for it. Until now, nobody is answering. And look, they are asking me for my name. I don't want to give, I mean, <laughs> I have to give them the true name. <laughs> Tom and Jerry <laughs> let us take them again nobody is answering Hello, you should be connected in a few minutes. Okay, we are waiting. Tuk, 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 tuk. I look like somebody's gone. Sorry, we missed you. Leave a message. What? That's silly. Leave a message. Be peace on you. Help us to know why you, what are you looking, we are looking we are talking to okay it says here so we missed you we missed uh, let's try a different website what you can do this one is to turn to be a potato okay i cannot find that website i don't know maybe they took it down because I remember the even the you know the address I, I cannot find it I type it in www you know look like the website is taken down uh, 
Yeah, I cannot find it. It was hilarious. Anyway, we post it in you. I mean, we did it live like now, so it should be there in YouTube. We asked him why the prophet he kissed the black stone, and they said because it's holy. We asked him why it's holy, he said because he kissed it. And now we can do the same, Muslims. Why you Muslim kiss the black stone? <laughs> Listen to the answer. <laughs> maybe, maybe, Muslims, if you are not truly pagans. Explain to us why the Prophet he kissed the black stone, which is in the shape of a vagina. Any Muhammadan? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, any two. You see, you say to a Muslim, anyone, they get scared. Any two. Any four. Any forty-four. By the way, if you are a person who speak different languages, my books is available in many languages and we offer them for free in many languages. Uh, we have just, we publish my book, Deception of Allah in Chinese. So that has really made me really feel happy because this is the first time ever any of my books translated to Chinese. And we have Sex in Allah now in, in Russian. And for sure we have my books in Indonesian language, uh, Malaysian language, uh, Croatian, Albanian, uh, you name it, you know, Portuguese, Spanish, blah, 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 etc. So, but I never thought really we will get the day uh, to have uh, the books uh, translated into uh, to Chinese because most of people here, they are not really, you know, Chinese. Uh, but now, by the help of one of you, amazing person, I'm very grateful to have this person, we have the book translated into the Chinese. So now, yeah, we have in French. So now, the secret to Prophet Allah, you know, the, sorry, the Prophet, sorry, the, the secret to Prophet, you can search it in Amazon. So, and actually that the French translation is better than my book in English. I will tell you why. You know, the, the one who translated the, the French version, he speak very professional, he's a professional, you know, uh, person in French language. So my English book, it is good. But because English is not my first language, so it's not, you know, that high standard of English, you know what I mean? So the translation in French is so good. So the French translation is wonderful. I don't know French, this is what people told me, the one who read the book, you know? They told me the translation is really good. Uh, but the important now that we have my books reaching the, the whole globe. I mean, who is left? China, Indonesia. If we go right now and search in Indonesia, you see that maybe number one video Indonesian people they watch about Islam is a Christian prince. We made the Ustad of Indonesia the joke of everybody. Do you know that? Uh, Muslim saying, do you know that the church played to death? Hey, my friend, don't give me a stupid statement. Your prophet, he prayed to death. He believed that death is a person. Get lost. That's why Allah will slaughter death in the day of judgment. This is how silly your God. Allah will bring death and he will slaughter him. As if a death is a person. Stupidity. Hindi, you see, most of Indian people, they speak English, right? So we are able to reach to India because simply, I think number one language spoken in India is English. Every Indian person go to school, they don't teach in Urdu, they teach in English. So all of them are receiving, you know, the knowledge. Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> Uh, 
Tani Abdul, Mayday, Mayday. Allah, he prayed to Allah. Allah, he asked his prophet to kiss a black stone. The black stone is the right hand of Allah. The right hand of Allah, they look like a vagina. The right hand of Allah is gone. There's nothing left. There's a few little rocks. You see, actually the black stone is a clear proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Because according to Muhammad, the black stone is going to witness for Muslims in the judgment day. Okay, so what the problem? The problem is nothing left of it. There's nothing left of the black stone. When the Muslim, they say to you, the black stone is holy and weak is the black stone and they have a guard to protect the black stone. The reality is there's nothing left of that stone. There's little tiny rocks inside and it is surrounded by rocks. Do you see it? It's surrounded by rocks. There's no stones. There's little tiny, 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 tiny rocks. And the rest, the brown you see, is just rocks. So how the black stone is going to witness for the Muslims in the Judgment Day? And this stone is gone. How Allah could not protect his stone, which is the important, this is the, like a, this is the one who is going to be like part of the court system of Allah. Ask any Muslim, is it true that the Prophet said, the Prophet between two bracket, said that the black stone is going to have eyes and tongue and is going to witness to Muslims? So why nothing left? And why it is in the shape of a vagina? And why we have to do maintenance? You can go right now, search in YouTube, maintenance to the black stone, the Kaaba. You will see how they do maintenance. They have a guy from Pakistan. He, you know, he's a professional supposed to in this business. And he do walks around it with heated gun. The black stone of Allah need maintenance of a guy from Pakistan. This is why they always have a guard next to the black stone because people are, they might pick up the little rocks from the rocks. Erdogan, he have one. Erdogan is proud that they have a little rock from the black stone in the Kaaba. Look like Erdogan when he went to the Kaaba, you know, he put his tongue there and he grabbed one like, like, like a frog. Otherwise, how Erdogan get one? He took one of those stones. Do we have any Muslim? So this is the stone uh, you Muslim you believe is going to witness for you in the judgment day and Allah could not protect it? We accept all kind of colors and I would like to see Indonesian Ustad. You know those Ustad, they just make money from those poor. There's the guy, his name is Abdul Samud. His, his name is Samud, right? Like the idol of Mecca, Samud. He he take five thousand dollar for a speech of two hours in any place in Indonesia. Five thousand dollar at least. And for sure they pay for his hotel, car, you know, food, you know. Five thousand dollar. Me, I don't even take five dollars. It's for free. All of you are here. All of you are welcome. You don't pay me even five dollars. He got paid five thousand dollars, yet he cannot answer anything about Islam because he's a potato. Any Abdul? The only one who tried to 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 answer me, uh, what his name? I forgot. 
uh, in insane or insane I forgot his name the guy who died who offered me five uh, uh, five BMW Christian Prince I have a talent for you five BMW like, what the heck I'm so glad he did not offer me five turtles from Indonesia even the offer is made in Germany Christian Prince can Christian Prince answer this question? Christian Prince not only can answer the question, he can make you shish kebab, and he is the one who gave you a heart attack. Any Abdul? What is his name? What is his name? Because I want to search his videos just for love, you know? We are bored. As you see, we are calling Muslims, and nobody is calling us. You know, where is, where is the brave? Look, we are live on air. Nobody want to do Nobody dare to call. Nobody dare to call. If the one who is saying who dare to call me and he is an American, he have a blue eyes, he doesn't know anything about Islam, the Muslim will be calling him all over. <laughs> In my scenario, we got a Muslim, he asked me for Jesus' DNA. That is the best they can do. What you want? You want Jesus DNA. His name is Ustaz Insane Mortadella. Okay, hold on. Insane Mortadella. Hold on, let me search for his name. His last name is Mortadella. Oh, hold on. Uh, Moco Ginetta. Moco Ginetta. Okay. All right. You know, somebody was saying Mortadella. I like Mortadella. I like Morta and Della together. Hey Della, how are you? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let us remember this dead guy. You know, we cannot make fun of a dead person, but he, he was stupid. What you can do? I feel sorry for him, actually. <clears throat> Episode number one. Are you ready? <laughs> Episode number one. <laughs> oh, man. Time go fast. Look at this. What? 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 Hold on, hold on. Mr. Insan Makagonita. In your opinion, how can we answer a lot of blasphemies toward Islam, Quran, Prophet, Muhammad, and Allah by Christian brands? Brands, huh? So now the Muslims, they send, uh, they send an email for, hey, uh, uh, hey, Christians, I have an idea. Why you don't send an email like this to the Ustaz? Don't say you are Christian. Don't lie. Just say how you can refute this guy. Can you do that, Indonesians? Say, don't you see what this guy doing? Don't you see how many Muslims leave Islam? And don't you see how many people watching his videos? Like, come on. So who is the Ustad? He have the guts. Like this guy, he did not have the guts to speak to me. But he tried. He's a genius. I'm your viewers. In the first episode, uh -huh. here are the answer from the question of our claims of Christian prince towards uh -huh. Islam, Quran, uh -huh. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We will provide the answer in English so that the world understand that the knowledge of Christian prince about Islam and Christian is mm -hmm. very shallow. Oh, uh, you want it to... You see, guys, by the way, my knowledge is very shallow. Like, if you are going to do fishing, you can capture my fish, it's too easy, because... <laughs> it, is too, it is too shallow. <laughs> and later, the guy, he died because of my answers. He had a heart attack. <laughs> to be done fair so we hope
he will open his face marks and we have a face to face dialogue uh, this is face to face dialogue now guys this is face to face dialogue so why the most and they say show us your face? <laughs> this is face to face dialogue hmm. uh, the <laughs> videos will be divided into uh, many episodes and titles hmm. and are presented using English and Indonesian uh -huh. subtitle is provided okay now for the first episode we begin about Trinity huh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh like what the heck now we started so all of this was what now now you decide to say assalamualaikum now you are in the house already for half hour you sit on the couch you are eating zucchini and now you decide to say assalamu alaikum that's deep backward pious christian prince doesn't understand the history of the of the origin of trinity uh -huh. it appeared in ad 325 when the conference of nice mm -hmm. from 20 May to mm -hmm. 25th okay. June AD uh -huh. 325. Uh -huh. At the time, mm -hmm. bishop and leaders of the church gathered in order to talk about the status of Jesus mm -hmm. led king by King Constantine. Mm -hmm. Signs at the time, there was a group of Arius hmm. who adjured that Jesus wasn't God while this is the first lie you go check you will see that Arius believe those Arius they believe that Jesus is God so those guys are just a potatoes they have no idea what they are talking about because the conference which happened at that time it was not about if Jesus is God or not it's about Jesus was the, there's a there's a start when Jesus came to existence or he was exist from the beginning that's all this is why when Muslims they speak, they speak with stupidity. Anyone can go right now and search for the, the for the name he just put in the in there, and you will see this guy is not telling anything truthful. So Muslims, my experience with them, they say anything to make the crowd happy. Muslims sadly they don't go and they don't confirm what their stupid teachers say to them. Whoever say to you anything, Christian prince, Muslim, whatever. Always check out if what they say it can is true or not. Don't take what people say to you for granted. So Muslims, who is the one who agree with this guy? Is it true that this person he believed that Jesus was not God? This is absolutely false. So stupidity is beyond imagination. That guy did not even start him with the poopoo. The guy did not start yet and he made a poo, poo because all the Christian sect doesn't matter even the one we believe they are heretic they believe that Jesus is God the conference was not about if Jesus is God or not the conference was is Jesus start to exist in a certain point or he exists with the father from the beginning that's all otherwise all of them they agree about the same thing Jesus is God even they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The question was, in this sect, when Jesus came to exist, when the, when the point of the existence of Jesus. But the Bible says, in the beginning it was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then the Word became a flesh. So that is Jesus from the beginning, the Word of God. Jesus said before Abraham, I am. That does mean his existence have nothing to do with the day of his birth. That is the existence of the flesh between us, born as a human between us. But that is not his existence. That's why he said before Abraham, I am. The Jews they said, well, you are not even 50 years old. So how you can say you are before our father Abraham? You are not even 50 years old. 
He said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham I am, and Abraham he saw my day and he rejoiced for it. So the Muslims, because they are so desperate, they have nothing to say. They come with any answer they wish, and all their answers prove them idiots. Oh, Ahmad, you know, call me. Why you don't call me, my friend? Why you don't call me? The economy let us see if the Muslim is right. Who who dare to do so? Who is a Muslim he dare to do so? Any Abdul? Because I can get you busted even from the Quran, you idiot. I can get you busted even from the Quran. Because the Quran, not in a single place, says that there is some Christian, they say, Jesus is not God. The Quran says, the Christian, they believe, and the Jews believe. So how come your God even do not know about that? Hello? Hmm. Any Abdul? Who is a brave Abdul? He has something to say. Some saying, giving the names of list, saying God has raised up CP, David Wood, Drop, Christian, Osama, Dark Dog, etc., etc. My friend, some of us, sadly, they hate Muslims. You see, Mimi Hijab, nobody knows about him, but by the help of our friend David Wood, he has 500,000 subscribers. They are not debaters. Who is the one who gave who made the uh, Ottoman famous. There is some people, they don't fit for debate. And don't shy to, to, be, to say it. This is the truth. They want to do good, but they make the fool famous. You will notice that every single Muslim want to debate, debate David Wood. But nobody want to come to me. That is telling you that in, with David they can survive, but they cannot survive with me. They are lined up to debate with David Wood because first he will give them chance to get a lot of subscribers. Secondly, the debate will not make any difference, regardless if it was good or bad. This is the truth. This idiot. Mimi Hijab, who was nobody, he was a speaker corner boy, nobody listened to him. David Wood agreed to debate with him, he made him famous. Thank you, David. This is what happened. And then David Wood, after the debate, I made videos about the debate, and Muhammad Hijab, he got so upset, I made him shish kebab. Always remember one thing, if a debate happened and I make many videos to get the Muslim busted, it's mean the one who was in the stage, he was not doing a good job. Otherwise, why want I make videos to refute the liar in the stage? Because the person who was in the stage next to him, the Christian, did not do a good job. When, I will give you an example. When this guy, uh, Mimi Hijab, he said, Not a single Jew, not a single Jew believe that God have a son. Not a single Jew. Why David Wood did not say to him, You stupid, idiot son of Muta? Go to the Quran. It says that the Jews believe that the person, his name is Uzair, is the son of Allah. Why don't do get that the opportunity to demolish him right in the street, in the, in, in, in the stage, in, immediately? Every Muslim will laugh at him. He just said, Not a, not a single Jew. And he repeat that tens of times. Not a single Jew, not a single Jew, not a single Jew. It was a time to make a barbecue. He did not answer him. Because he just demolished the Quran. One single verse alone is enough to demolish all his statements. The Quran says that the Christian they believe that Jesus is the son of Allah and the Jews believe that there's a guy his name is Uzair, not Ezra, is the son of Allah. It doesn't say one Jew, it says the Jews. So why we don't get the Muslim busted when we are debating him? 
Then after we debate, we go to make videos. When the guy, he says, when David, he asks him, will Allah have body part? And the, and the Mimi Hijab, he laugh, he make a mockery. Muslim, they start laughing too. He says, who said so? Why David wouldn't say, hey, hello, are you stupid or what? You're a prophet said so. Your Quran said so. And let me play for you some scholars by video saying so. Don't let the mockery, my friend, listen, the Christians, this is the problem of the Christians who they are not Middle Eastern. They don't understand that Muslims don't debate, Muslims do mockery. So when you debate a Muslim, you prepare yourself that this person tried to make a mockery of you. He have no answer. He is a coward. He is a liar. And therefore, there's no debate. There's a mockery. And the only way to deal with mockery is to wipe the floor with his face, with his own medicine. Okay, Ahmad, you tried to call me, my friend. Just text me. Uh, look at this guy. MashaAllah, he is quoting Quran for me. Look at this. This is, you see, this is Muslims. This guy, he just recited Quran for us. His mouth is so clean because he is following the Holy Prophet. And now I will call you. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Answer up. Explain why his mouth is filthy. Muhammad is unavailable. Where you go, Muhammad? Where you go? Try to clean your mouth? Your filthy mouth? Potato. So, this is why I say, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. We appreciate the work of all Christians who fight Islam, but there's people who they are not really good to debate. They are not good. Because debate, debate is someone who don't go after the debate, refuting what they said in the debate. You do it in the debate, not later. Right? When they went to Uthman, they start talking about philosophy. What philosophy? I mean, those people, they are doing shish kebab, hummus. Are you going to coffee shop talking about philosophy now? Who care about philosophy? Ask about something important, debate about something important. Now it's time to philosophy. Suddenly they became philosophers. All of them, they are philosophers, the Muslims and the Christians. Even Mimi Hijab, he having his own website, he says, a philosopher. Mimi Hijab is a philosopher. Is it philosophy is against Islam? <laughs> philosophy is against Islam, but all of them are philosophers. So we support those Christians, whatever their names, including David Wood. He is, a, you know, he is a wonderful person, by the way. But I say that they don't, they did not learn yet that debating with Muslims is not a debate because you cannot debate a liar. You have to corner a liar. A debate is something can happen between two decent, honest people. 
Do you agree, people? If the other person who is speaking to me is not decent, he can give me any answer he want. So do your God Allah have a hands? Who said so? A decent Muslim, if they all exist, he would say, yes, the Prophet says so. I agree. There's a video of Fifi, go watch it. And he was debating with a Muslim, speaking to him, well, you cannot call us kuffar because we believe Allah have hands. Because the Quran says so. So Fifi say, yes, Allah have hands. Muhammad, he say, no. Who's, who's of them that's lying? So when you go to debate with the Muslim, you prepare yourself that you are going to speak to a taqiyya, loading software. Taqiyya means we can lie to Christians, we can lie to Jews, we can lie to everybody when it's come to our religion. There's no debate. And this is what I do here. I'm not debating Muslims. I corner their lies. Just yesterday, remember, we have a Muslim, he called me, he's a nice person. He start doing duct tape, duct tape, duct tape, duct tape. Anything we show him, he say, yeah, this is bad. But I think this is not true. It's not the Prophet did not say that. Even the verse in the Quran, he says, I think this is not from the Quran, really. Somebody put it there. Duct tape. So we should remember always. <clears throat> Go, go, Ahmed. You are just a filthy mouth. Go. Obviously, your mother, she is not good to use such a language with me. I think you are born from Muta. Don't come here. Go clean your mouth first. This religion, or the followers, they speak too much about morality. When they have zero, they have none. A woman in the Middle East, she can't walk alone in the street. Do you know why? Because Muslims, they have a lot of ethic. To the point, a woman, she needs a guardian. Do you, see, do you see how much ethic? Not a single window in the Middle East does not have bars. Do you know why? Because there's no thieves there. Not a single house don't have high walls. Do you know why? Because Muslims, they are decent. They don't jump over the wall. They don't spy at your wife if she is showing her legs they don't steal your rag if it's in the laundry even the laundry is at risk but nobody speak about god and decencies as those people the land of faith how you can be a person of decency when your prophet is the most perverted man ever in history when a man he go to his own son wife and he flirt with her and none of the Muslims say this is a shame why just you cannot speak about Muhammad that's it the second you say to Muhammad if you say to a Muslim if somebody do that to your wife is that okay he will say no 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 okay if the Prophet did that to your wife is it okay he will say yeah <laughs> this is how they are they are under the terrorism of Islam nobody dare to question the faith of Muhammad, but we do. Do we have any Abdul? At least he have a clean mouth to speak to us without the F word. Uh, by the way, you can say the F word as long as you are reading Quran, because the Quran is full of it, or the Hadith. Any Muhammadan? Anyone? <clears throat> I challenge you Muslims about anything you believe in. Just name it, whatever you want. You see, the Muslim when they claim they can debate somebody, they choose a topic a month in advance, they go to the internet, they collect all what they claim to be evidence to hope and support their ideas. I do not need that. I'm live on air. Bring it on. Who there? You have zero knowledge in your cult. 
and this is why you are afraid and it doesn't matter how much a sneaky snake you are I will grab you from your head not from your tail only try me any Abdul open it challenge open challenge we have a Muslim his name is Abraham Abraham how are you doing my friend why you don't give me a text I will call you I like to hear your opinion about your religion what do you think mr. Abraham are you there they are heroes in the chat they are zero to call me they line up to debate the Christians who know nothing even about their books Christian by names we cannot find them to debate us where are they the last one who called me he agreed the Quran teach that Muslim women they can rent their vagina they agree all of you, you heard it today. He said, what's the problem? It's a problem for the Muslim that Jesus is God, but it's not a problem that his sister, she can rent her vagina. <laughs> Do you see the madness of this stupid religion? How awkward it is? And they make it even more funny. They say we Muslims we are more conservative. So they are conservative, but Muslim women she can give her breast to a stranger to suckle it. And then the Muslim today they try to find a solution for this. They say, Oh no, no, it does not mean to suckle her, it's mean to drink her milk. Why you think your wife she have a boobs with faucet? In Arabic it says suckle him. She did not say, Muhammad did not say, give him milk from your breast. And even this is your Mimi hijab going around saying to a Muslim sheikh, can I suck your wife's tits? Isn't it, this is a clear evidence that Muhammad is mentally ill? If a man, he suck a woman's tits, what that will do exactly? You tell me. That will make him not to feel sexually toward her no more. Since when? So now those who do porn, when they do suckling, and I'm talking about Muhammad now, when Muhammad was doing suckling to his wife's breast, he is not having any sexual desire to them no more. Is that like the nature of a human being? When you suckle a woman's breast, you lose your desire? Isn't it obvious that this person is making fun of you? And Aisha then, she ordered her sisters, imagine, she ordered her sisters to suckle whoever want to enter upon her. So now it's part of the state system. You want to meet the wife of the king of the Muslims, the fraud Muhammad. You have to go to the office of Aisha, sisters and nieces. And there, there's many women who they are relative to Aisha. Their breast is coming out, boing, boing, boing. And then you sit in their lap. And then you have to suckle each one of them 10 different time in 10 different days until you are satisfied remember you cannot leave the nipples from your mouth until you are totally satisfied you hear related to me from malik from 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 it says that aisha the wife of the prophet may allah please with her bless her please uh, please him and grant him peace admitted those whom her sister and her and the daughters of her brother had nursed 
and she did not meet, admit those who were nursed by the wives of her brothers. Look, the, the, the whole Muslim tribe is nursing everybody. And not only that, by the way, somebody might say, oh, those are not Muslims who they are men. No, they are growing men. Growing men. And there's tons of hadith about it. <clears throat> Read it. Read it and laugh. All those hadith speaking about Aisha, the wife of Muhammad. Ordering her sisters to give their nipples to a growing man with beard. And the purpose and the logic is to meet with Aisha. So this is a story here of a man. He wanted to meet with Aisha, but the sister of Aisha, she was able to suckle him only three times. So he could not do it. He got ill because he was not able to do suckle the sister of Aisha 10 times. So imagine today, I go to meet with Aisha. I have to go to her sister and she have to give me her boobs and I have to suck her nipples 10 times. And what is the purpose? I can meet with Aisha. Somebody saying, didn't some women pour perfume on the feet of Jesus? This is suckling now for you. Look at this. Guys, just show you the stupidity of those Abdus. If a woman she pure some she pour some a perfume on Jesus' feet. It's the same as women suckling. <laughs> Adult man. <laughs> this is the same for the Abdul. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, how far stupidity can go? How far? Sometimes I ask myself, when the Muslims, they try to find an answer, where their stupidity is coming from, we are talking about a woman. She gave her chest to a growing man with beard. He is not her, I mean, even if it's her son, which mother she will give her breast, breast to, a, to a, her son, even if he, he is her son, he is her son. She will give her breast to someone, he, her son he is he's 30 years old. No woman will do that. And no son will accept such a thing. Your prophet is a perverted man. And now the man, he suckled Aisha's sister 10 times, let us say. He's not going to sleep with, with Aisha no more. Oh, because he slept already, he have enough from Umm Kalthum. Did he have, did he have orgasm from Umm Kalthum, so he do not need Aisha now? And why 10 times? What about 9? What 10 times will do? Isn't it obvious that Muhammad is a perverted, mentally ill person? This is God. You could not find such a law in the Quran. Here we go, the DNA guy. No, I found it in the Quran. You are a stupid ear. You do not know what you are talking about. This is why I hang up on you, because you are donkey. Look what this guy he said. Good 
You could not find such a law in the Quran, right? Who said so? Who said so? This is was in the Quran, but the goat ate it. Let us go to the Hadith. While Muhammad dead, he just died. According to Aisha, a female goat from YouTube. Her name is Mimi Hijab. She went to the bed of a prophet. She took off her t-shirt. And she jumped in the top of the prophet when he is in the bed. Remember, the Quran is under the pillow. In the top of the pillow, there's the head of the prophet. So the goat, she cannot eat the Quran unless she move the head of the prophet and flip him from the bed. So let me let me draw the situation for you. Hold on. You know, I'm very good in art. You cannot live without my art. Just face it. <clears throat> So this is the bed of Muhammad. And this is Muhammad. We will change the color so you can see it. This is the Prophet Muhammad head. This is his body. This is his feet. The Quran is under the pillow. Here, behind. So the goat, she cannot eat it because the head is already on the top of the pillow and the pillow in the top of the Quran. Okay, so now how the goat, she will be able to eat the Quran? The answer is very simple. The goat, she jump on the top of the prophet. Let's make it a different color, hold on. Let us use something. blue oh this is a blue blue is not showing really good here we need different background uh let us make it a green maybe so this is the goat in the top of the prophet let us make it yellow man i mean there's no goat is yellow but allah allah can uh, can make it yellow you know you never know she might be yellow yeah that's that's better so now the goat is in the top of Muhammad, may Allah please with him. And this is her head. <laughs> and the goat, she's asking herself the serious question, how in the world I'm going to get the Quran now? <laughs> she said, okay, it's very simple. Let me flip Muhammad from the top of the bed. So the goat, she flipped Muhammad. She threw him from the bed. Muhammad is gone now. And then she flipped the pillow. No pillow no more. So what is left now is the goat. And now the goat is chewing the Quran. Let us draw the goat again because we have to erase some of the goat. May Allah bless her. This is the goat. I know, I know that my drone is the best. I understand, you know. I'm born this way, what I can do? I mean, I cannot stop my skills. So this is the goat and this is what is left of the Quran. And the goat like, <clears throat> and not only this, the, what making this story suspicious for me, that the goat, she did not eat the whole Quran. She flipped the pages and she chose certain verses and certain chapters 
She did not eat the whole Quran. Hmm. She is picky. That's why they call her at that time, by the way, the picky goat. Picky. She did not eat the whole Quran. She she flipped like she flipped the pages. Page number two, page number three. No, not this one. Not this one. Not this three. Oh no, 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 not this one. No, this chapter Al Baqara. No, no, no. Nah, not this one. Not this one. And she is using her tongue, by the way. If you think she can't flip the book, you are mistaken. Go watch the goats. So she was using her tongue, flipping the pages one after one. And because she speak Arabic very well and she is very well educated, she graduated from the goat online university. She found the verse finally. Oh yeah, 10 time breastfeeding for adult. This is what I'm looking for. And then she ate the verses. And now the Muslim, they cannot find those verses no more. This is a religion. Muslims, the goat, she ate the verse in the page. She did not eat the verse in your memory. Don't you Muslim, you say you memorize the Quran by heart? Did the goat eat your memory too? So I find that this is, was an excuse story so the Muslim Sunni, they will delete the verses from the Quran because obviously they are ashamed of such teaching. So what we will do, let us blame the goat. But who is the naive in the world when I believe in such a garbage story? The one who ate the Quran is you Muslims, not the goat. Because if the goat ate the verse, well, there is the verse still, Aisha, she remembered. The Muslim, they receive it. The goat ate the, 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 the verses, but she did not eat your memory. The problem is, Muslims who they are ashamed of their cult, they are so desperate to find an excuse. So they come with the stories. It is humiliating even for the religion. It's so stupid. How in the world you want to say our book is protected, preserved, if a goat she was able to eat it, and now you cannot even recite the verse for me? Who as a Muslim can recite that verse? So what we say? Oh, the, gay, the, the goat she ate the book, brother. And to make it more stupid, the goat, she flipped the prophet from the bed. She ate the goat in the top of the prophet. She ate, she ate the book. So the story is disrespect to a man, they worship him as God. Disrespect to a God, they claim that he protect his book. And the story itself of proving that Muhammad is a perverted man anyway, because what kind of God he received or he sent to his prophet such an idea, a wisdom that a woman she have to give her boobs ten times to be suckled or to suckle a man so he can enter upon her. If anything was lost, it's built in mathematical protection. Did you calculate the verse of a ten time breastfeeding? <laughs> mathematical protection. <laughs> the mathematical protection Muslim the claim about is based on number nineteen, and this uh, this thing we can defeat in two seconds. You go to chapter number one, verse number one. You calculate the letters. You will see they are not nineteen. They are even twenty four, twenty five at least. Here we go. I change any Muslim to call me right now, and we can calculate the numbers. Oh, we can calculate the letters right now, and you will see it's a fraud. Even the Muslim, by the way, they say 19, chapter 19, miracle is a fraud. And the one who came with it, by the way, the Muslims killed him. 
because even in order to make what he called 19 happen, he have to delete, not only wrongly to calculate the numbers, he have to delete verses and words from the Quran. That's why they killed him. The, the guy was killed in Arizona. And not only that, he claimed to be a messenger of Allah too. I never used the first verse. No, you have to, because this is the calculation based on verse number one, Al-Basmala. Because all the division is based on number 19 in the Basmala. Yeah. You can open the website of the guy who come with this miracle. You will see it. The first verse he mentioned is this one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's not 19. Do we have any Abdul? Chapter 79, verse number 30, does it say earth shake? No, my friend, nowhere it says that. Actually, all Muslim translation never say that. This is a fraud. This is a Muslim kid. He is like 21 years old. He was trying to refute me. He made a video saying that the word the haha mean the shape of the egg. And then even uh, uh, Zakir Naik, he took it from the kid. But if you go right now, you will read any Islamic interpretation or even translation, you will not find any of them saying the word shape, shape of the egg. Because there's, there's no such a thing. The haha is the opposite, it's flat, he made it flat. You can go right now to the dictionary and you will see. This is why all interpretations saying he made it flat. The scholars who they are Muslims who speak Arabic very well and they are Arab. Why they don't say what they are saying, shape on egg? Nobody says that. So this is the this is the verse in the Quran. Open. Here we go. This is the website, chapter 79. And the earth after that he made it flat. Not only he spread, he made it flat. This is what the ha mean. The ha is you see, like when your mother she is making a pizza. She makes the dough. And then there's a piece of wood. She she push it in the top round wood. She push it in the top of the da and she make the da flat. That is what the haha mean. You can open the uh, the dictionary right now, and you will see. Here we go. This is the word. This is the word. You can copy it and take it to any Arabic dictionary. Right away. They lie. They lie. This is why if we go right now <coughs> uh, and we say, okay, let us see what the Muslim they say about this. They, do they do they say this is uh, the haha mean he made it uh, egg shape? Nobody says that. This is a joke. Look, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. This is the chapter 79. Verse number 30. They say the opposite. He said the earth made it flat. Read it. This is what the ha mean. He made the earth flat. Read it. He spread it out, the earth. He made it flat. Do you see it? So why if the word is shape of an egg, they say he made it flat? <laughs> Since when the egg is flat? Maybe after he cook it? <laughs> Uh, your book says uh, the edges of the earth okay uh, Armin call me to talk about this uh, verse you want you want to call you Mr. DNA do you like me to call you I don't know actually if I block you because you are stupid I think I blocked you but just to show you how stupid you are your book says the edge of the earth. I want you to say in front of everybody that whoever says such a thing is a stupid. Say it. Is that fair, guys? It's a challenge. I want you to say, whoever says the earth has edges, he's a stupid. I'm waiting for you. Or me. I'm waiting. Say, whoever say the earth have edges is stupid. 
Just say it. What happened? I'm waiting. Say it so I can put it in the screen. Actually, already you did that because you are saying, trying to prove that this is wrong, right? You are trying to prove that this is wrong. But you stupid idiot. Don't you know that the Quran say that the earth has edges? So because you are a donkey, you have no knowledge of your stupid religion. You claim that this is an error. But now if we accept that this is an error, that means the Quran is the book of error. Let's go to the Quran. We will ask you, Mr. Abu. They text me in Skype, Mr. Abu, so I can uh, I can call you and you can tell me about your question, and we can enjoy your genius knowledge. This is the Quran using the same word in the Bible. The same exact word. أَوَلَمْ يَرُوا أَنَّا إِنَّا أَتْنَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ نُنْقِصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا The edges of the earth. Chapter 13, verse number 41. Chapter 21, verse number 44. <laughs> Are you there, Armin? So now... I have one of two solutions, either you accept it literally, as you said in the in the post, or you will say to me, he don't mean literally. Are you there? Are you there? Is that literally or not literally? Any Abdul, literally, you've been defeated. Literally, you've been humiliated. Don't forget to ignore the what is between the bracket, because you are the one who taught me to ignore what is between the brackets. <laughs> dummy this is why they don't dare to call me they don't know what i will say to them they have no idea where is the answer coming from they are so slow they are so dummy they are so wicked they are out of words hey, abu why you don't call me my friend and let everybody hear you guys we have mr abu here and mr abu look like he is a smart person uh, Abu, text me in Skype, I will call you. Even though it's getting late for me, I need to go soon. I mean, I'm live really for how many hours now? Three hours and 12 minutes. Uh, I, will, I will talk to you like for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. What do you say, Abu? How come, how come your God decide he would let people kill him? And if he is God, how did you know for sure that he suffered? How come your God, he let me give him a finger every day? How come? How come that Allah is suffering right now because of my talk? How come that Allah cannot refute me? How come Allah cannot kill me? How come? How come I say every day Allah is a stupid, idiot, perverted God? And how come Allah could not send me? One of you can at least refute me if he cannot come because he's wearing a veil. How come? Is Allah suffering because of my words? Or he is mute and deaf? He hears nothing, he sees nothing. How come? How come your God, he gave you verses of 10 times breastfeeding for adult? Did you do it before you call me? Or you would do it after you call me? How come? When a person, he say, how come? I mean, your religion have no come at all. Even your prophet, he never come. And here we go, this is the hadith. The prophet Muhammad, he never been able to have sex with his wife and his wife, she never have come.
once a woman she she wanted to speak dirty to me and she said to me I want you to come and meet me so you can come I said come where my English was bad at that time you know I thought come like yeah okay some where, what where come what where how who what here we go this is your prophet and his wife she witnessed that her husband never ever made her come read it the wife of the prophet she said to the prophet her husband do women even have this charge how come how come the prophet have the power of 40 men and boom boom yet he could not make his wife come are you there mr come the wife of the prophet she is saying look what the heck women they have this charge so what muhammad was doing in the bed he was cleaning the lice from the hair of his wife and her pubic area. As you see, this is the wife of the Prophet, first hand witness. Muhammad never made her come. So, Mr. Abdul, how come? Are you there? Hello? This is the hero Muhammad who used to do F his wives, all of them in, in one hour. No wonder he do it in one hour because he was doing nothing. He just shake hands. The Hadith says that the Prophet used to F all his wife in one hour. By the way, one hour sa'a at that time is used for 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it's going to take him more time to go between the beds. In 15 minutes, he can F 13 women. Are you a rabbit? And then we find that none of them have this charge ever. Zero. Imagine how embarrassing that a man, he speak about how powerful he is in bed. And then the wife, she say, he speak about the women, she ask him about, she come and she saw a liquid. Should she wash it or not? Look at the look at the questions. Look at the clinic. Look at the prophet. He's a specialist in vagina. And then the wife she said, "What women they have this charge?" Looking at the husband. The wife she is looking at her husband, saying, "What the heck? I married an idiot. He don't even know how to make a woman come." I cannot find anything from the Quran. Okay, no, I am finding this in the, from the Quran because uh, Abdul, listen. The Quran says, whatever the Prophet say, you take. Whatever the Prophet say, you take. So you cannot run away from it. Whatever the Prophet say, this is Quran. You are a dummy. Literally, a dummy. And I bet you, you never made your wife come. Excuse me. This is your Quran, you idiot. Whatever the Prophet he said to you, take it. So take what the messenger assigned to you this is Quran so any Muslim he tried to save his ass by denying the Prophet words it doesn't work it doesn't you have to come the Prophet will never come and his wife never come and that explains why he never had kids because obviously he never did it even the hadith says that the prophet he was having sex with the wrong object he never did it with the wives and the question is 
Can we receive some DNA to prove that Muhammad ever had come? Aisha, she said, once the Prophet was bewitched, so that began to imagine that he had done a thing, in fact, he did not. Including what? Including he come. Including what? Including he had sex with his wives. He did not. Aisha, actually, she made it, she made it even more clear. She said, the Prophet continues to such and such and such a period of time. To do what? He imagined that he had come and he had sex. In fact, he did not. So the question now to the Abdul, Muhammad was having sex with who and where? If it's not the wife, the wife she's saying, or the wife they say, it did not come to us. Muhammad was doing it where? There's a cousin of mine, he's a very heavy, heavy sleeping person. So once he went to the bathroom, sorry, he, he want to go to the bathroom at night. So he, he did it in the bathroom, you know, uh, and he came back supposedly. And then when he lay down in the bed, he asked his wife, he said, uh, honey, when we open the bathroom door, does the light come on by itself? His wife, she said, no, honey, that is the refrigerator. Do you think your prophet was having sex with the refrigerator? He thought it is his wife, like my cousin, who went to the bathroom, but in fact he opened the door of the refrigerator. This is a prophet of God. He opened the door of the bathroom, the light turned on, he did it there, he came back, he remembered like, oops, since when we opened the door of the bathroom, the light turned on, huh, so now he want to confirm it, honey, when we go to the bathroom and we open the door, do the light turn on by itself, the wife, she's smart, she said, Abdul, listen, that happened only when you opened the door of the refrigerator, which means you pissed there. So your prophet was pissing where? How come? See what happened when you use one word to Christian Prince, he opened a topic about you. You just said, how come? And look what happened, a disaster. Just from saying, how come? I can make a book about it. All what you said, how come? The rest is mine. Once we were, I made a challenge to Muslims, this is a long time ago. I said, say three words, just say three words, and I will make your prophet busted from those three words. So the guy, he like he decided to make it impossible. So he, he typed the word microwave. And now how in the world a Christian prince will come with something against Muhammad? I mean, come on. I just said microwave. I said, are you sure that this is the word you choose? He said, I'm very sure. I said, are you sure? He said, yes, I'm very sure, okay? And then I got him this. Here we go. You have the microwave of Allah. The Prophet, he promised every Muslim that he will be a female and he will carry a baby and he will deliver the baby in less than 15 minutes. That is the fast, fastest cooking microwave of babies. Abu saying, why your mind always speak about dirty stuff? Thank you, because my mind is full of Quran. It is you, Quran, keep speaking about dirty stuff. What kind of a prophet, a woman, she come to him, telling him what happened between her legs and that she was masturbating, and she's asking now the prophet, shall I wash it? You have it last night, and now you are coming and still wet there? And who is going to help you? The guy was sent by Allah. So Muhammad was sent by Allah to clean vagina, not to clean the earth from filth. Muhammad is a vagina specialist. 
Women do not know if they need to wash the vagina or not before Muhammad. Muhammad is the one who gave them the answer. Muhammad did not question her, saying to her, shame on you to masturbate. Imagine a different guy. He was worried about her vagina being washed or not. The woman, she said clearly, she was masturbating, imagining things. Tahtalim. What Muhammad is worried about? Okay, now I think, let me see. Okay, no, no, this is disgusting. No, don't, I don't put your panty up. I thought it's look good. Don't it look scary. Aisha, the one Aisha have is a lot better. No, 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 no. Put, put your skirt up again. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, you go now, you go now, and you wash it, okay? This is a prophet of God. So, who is the one who is obsessed with those things? It's your book. So when we quote to Muslims what is written in their books, they say we are obsessed with what is written in their books, which is filthy. Who is the one who promised you endless penis? So you blame me for quoting your prophet? Who is the prophet? He says, when you go to heaven, you do boom, boom, dahman, dahman, which means, do you understand? I'm not going to describe more because it's very filthy. He swear by Allah. He says when you do boom boom, you do with dahman dahman. Who is the filthy? Where is God? Where is the teaching of God? But we have to be honest. I don't talk about the filth of Muhammad always. Sometimes I go to something very nice and comedy. Like as an example, not limited. This brother, and I was half in the shade and half in the sun. So, my teacher told me that I shouldn't do that. When I asked for the reason, he said, Because this is where shaitan sits. So, he uh, is asking me, Can you elaborate? Yeah, I can easily elaborate. This is what the Prophet told us. Alayhi salatu wasalam. There are so many things, Yahya. What the heck? So the Prophet is not only a specialist in vagina, he's a specialist in not to sit half in the sun and half in the shade. Do you see how deep this religion is? This guy Muhammad is so good. Sitting once and I was half in the shade and half in the sun. So my teacher told me that I shouldn't do that when I asked for the re- The Abdul, he's saying, say what it says, a clapping. In our doctrine, Abdul, I did not say clapping, you stupid idiot. I was showing you, I was making the sound of Dahman, Dahman, you idiot. So the guy, he thought we are talking about clapping. I mean, do you see the stupidity? We are talking about effing, effing. Do you Muslim F by using clapping? Do you F by using two hands and you clap? So this, this is what you got from the sound I made, clapping? Turtle. Who's talking about clapping? You're a prophet when he said Dahman, he's speaking about you, how you will F violently. And he made a sound. The guy he thought we are talking about clapping the hands. I mean, what's wrong with those people? This is what you got from what I say to you. So you're a prophet saying when you F a woman, you clap. Genius. When they feed them, how they grow them, what kind of light they see. Oh, the light which came from the vagina of Muhammad's mother when she gave birth to him. It reached all the way the palaces of Damascus. Even historian, by the way, they wrote about it. A light, strong light came from Mecca. The funny, nobody saw the light coming from the vagina of Muhammad's mother in Mecca, but they saw it in Damascus. Stupid cult. But brother, they're important now. Please, let us not to sit half in the shade, half in the sun, because this is dangerous. It's proven, by the way. I was sitting once, and I was half in the shade and half in the sun. So my teacher told me that I shouldn't do that. When I asked for the reason, he said, because this is where shaitan sits. True. That's it. We cannot sit where Shaitan sit. Okay, what if Shaitan he sit in the in the shade always? We cannot sit in the shade. What if Shaitan he sat in the sun? We can't go in the sun. 
I mean, what does it have to do with what I have to do with Shaitan? If Shaitan, he said there, what's my business? This is the stupidity of this cult. So, guys, I, uh, as you see, our Skype is open and we are out of Abdul for today. Sadly, you know, we consumed consumed all of them. You know, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the goat ate every single Abdul left in the chapter of uh, breastfeeding for adult. Alhamdulillah. And uh, remember, brother, the Quran is preserved. All right. Doesn't matter how many goats they ate the Quran. Still, the Quran is preserved. And, uh, you know, uh, this goat, by the way, uh, I we accused this goat was sent by the uh, the, the Jews. Uh, she was a Jewish goat and she was trained, you know, like you see them in the circus, right? You see the circus, they teach even lions how to jump and, you know, even a, a bird talk. So why they will not teach the goat? The goat are smart. So, and the goat, they like to eat books. It's very known. So the, the Jews, they took the goat to their school and they taught the goat to go to the bedroom. You know, they make a bedroom like the bed of a Muhammad and, you know, and they made a, you know, and, the, and they put a Jewish guy, he looked like Muhammad. And then they taught the goat every day to jump on the bed and look under the pillow. And then and she, you know, and they even teach her which page to look for. And they ate those verses specifically and she ate them. And now we don't have them because of the Jewish. However, brother, the Quran is preserved. And this goat now is wanted. And sooner or later, we are going to find it. I promise you. We have more than 1 billion Muslims looking for the goat who ate the Quran. If you think, goat, that you can escape what is coming, I say to you, you are wrong. We will find you. We will open your belly and we will take our Quran holy from inside your belly. Our Quran is preserved, Mrs. Goat. And now every Muslim, single Muslim in the world is looking for you. But please don't sit half in the shade and half in the sun, because if you do so, we cannot get close to you. For this is not a permissible for Muslims. And I was half in the shade and half in the sun. Drink, yeah, drink. So my teacher told me that I shouldn't do that. When I asked for the reason, he said, because this is where shaitan sits. That's it. So he uh, he's asking me, can you elaborate? Yeah, yeah. I can easily elaborate. I can easily. This is what the Prophet told us. That's it. This is what the Prophet told us. I mean, what, what do you want more? What's wrong with people? I mean, do you want more convincing explanation? The Prophet says so, that's it. The Prophet says so, it means the poopoo is big. And who, who can argue with this poopoo? When we wake up, we sniff water up our nostrils, nostrils three times and blow it out. Why? 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 The Prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. True. Did you see that? No. But no, What do you mean? Do not, so I, are you saying we did not see it? You liar. I have witnesses. I have true witnesses. Once I was sleeping, I was a kid at that time. You know, I was just like, you know, I think I was like 92, 91, you know. Anyway, so I was asleep. And then my grand grandmother, she is like 500 years old. Uh, she came to the room sure, to cover me because always I like, I don't like to cover myself. So she liked to take care of me. And then she saw two shoes coming from my nose. Actually, four shoes, to be honest with you. Because there was two shit on. I have two holes, two bedrooms. So, but, but at that time, what happened, there was no cameras. And this is why we are we have a lack of evidence. But do we have witnesses? I have my grand grandmother. You know, once, just to show you the Muslims, how desperate they are. Once I went to a Muslim room, big, a huge chat room. And those Muslims just say to them, somebody convert to Islam, they go crazy. So I type in the chat, I said, guys, did you hear the news? The Pope, the third wife of the Pope and his mother who died last year, they converted to Islam today. Listen carefully. And I posted again, guys, did you hear the news? The third wife of the Pope and his mother who died last year, they converted to Islam today. The admin who was holding the microphone, he said, stop, 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 brother, sister, stop, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Do you see the good news? Amazing, brother. 
the, the third wife of the Pope and his mother who died last year, they converted to Islam today. Please, brothers and sisters, please invite your friends. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He got away. And the chat room went so crazy. The chat room or, or, like, already had like 900 people you know, inside it. And there's, they want so not. Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. And then they want to give you the microphone to tell the news. But then one of them, he noticed, he said, brother, stop. This guy is making fun of us. He said, the third wife of the Pope and his mother who died last year. What's wrong with you? Finally, they noticed after five minutes of a bragging like a, like a puppy. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Idiot. The wife, third, the, the third wife of the pro, of the pope, and his mother, who died last year. They don't, they don't even, they, they don't have a brain. Once went to a Muslim chat room, and the, you know, the, everybody was snoring. The second they see my name, they go crazy. Christian Prince is here, and suddenly the name started growing. Christian Prince, we got you busted. We have recording of you. Okay, hold on. Let me play it for you. We know how you make people leave Islam. And he played my voice, saying, "Give me one Muslim, I give you five hamburger." <laughs> I was joking, you know, <laughs> because we were desperate to debate a Muslim. Give me one Muslim, I give you five hamburger. So he played that. He said, "Christian Prince, come, come and answer." Now we know how you convert people out of Islam. You are giving them half five hamburgers. Come, you coward. Come, we exposed you. We are going to post this everywhere. So I took the microphone and I said, oh, okay, well, yeah, that's true. This is my voice, I confess. But are you saying to me that you Muslim, you exchange your God for the sake of five hamburger? <laughs> and the Muslim, they got so upset. And then the other guy, he said to him, stupid you, he even beat us in our chat room. You give him the microphone. Don't you know you should never let him talk? This guy, the second he hold the microphone, we cannot stop him. He, this is what they said to me. He got me busted. You Muslim, you exchange your God for five hamburgers. And you should see how excited he was, like they recorded my voice saying, give me one Muslim, I give you five hamburgers. So the Muslim, they start thinking, and the turtle is working now. Ha ha, this is why each time Christian Prince, he go live on air, some Muslims leave Islam. Aha, it was the hamburger. And you know what? Let us be honest here. Who can resist hamburger? Nobody. Can you? Five hamburger? You know, Abdul, if I give every Muslim five hamburger to leave Islam, I will be bankrupt long time ago i would be homeless i don't even go to the restaurant to eat in restaurant five hamburger to leave islam who cares stay as a muslim i will keep the hamburger for myself and how cheap this religion is to the point the followers of allah they explain they exchange their god with a hamburger and by the way is it like hamburger beef or hamburger pork and just to be sure People are now, now I'm getting hungry. Unbelievable. I don't know what to eat. Uh, I should buy some food. I am out of food. All right, guys. <clears throat> I just remember I did not eat since yesterday. So with hamburger, with the blessing of hamburger of Allah, I hope we have a good time together. And we did uh, uh, enjoy it. Uh, don't forget uh, uh, to leave your comment because the more comment you make, the more we know that you are involved and you are thinking and you are not a hamburger yourself. You are not a turtle. We don't want turtles. We have enough in this earth. We need people who use their brain. So use your brain. Think, you know, involve in the conversation. Give your opinion. Don't be a turtle. Be a brain of a human being. Use the gift which God he gave to you. With this, I say, may the Lord bless you all. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, Islam is a fraud, Islam is a scam, and we prove it every day. Thank you.
I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. Take this wig of flag, you saw them! That the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 